your name is Timmy from Tim Jong Un Productions. That was a quote from uh, your mom. Uh, that's who I am. <laughs> um, You're my mom. Who's ever? I hate that that made me laugh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm your mom. I, I'm sorry. It's it's out there. So, <laughs> anyway, who are you people? I'm your creepy uncle from uh, the Warus Man. Mm. <laughs> Uh, I'm Luca from... I don't know. I can't think of anything. I'm just Luca. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. You could just say... I'm Luca and I'm weathering... You're the the sunshine angel. I'm the sunshine girl. Yeah, there was it. Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, Yeah, references. I'm weathering to talk about this film. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm weathering away because we're all weathering away <laughs> references yes. references for days <laughs> yeah. so yeah anyway uh if you as you can tell uh we got a guest on the podcast uh he is one half of the middle section podcast the only uh movie review show that wait ah oh, fuck i gotta i fucked that up hold on the only the only <laughs> the only podcast where it sounds like two drunk friends having a conversation <laughs> instead of a professional movie review show you can find his podcast on spotify uh that's it i guess jack say hi jack my name is jack i'm on this podcast hello everybody that was my mm, formal hello, introduction everyone. No, thank nice. you for having me. That was pretty good. This is awesome. Yeah, of course. I'll see you guys later. No, I'm kidding. Um... <laughs> no, yes. Yeah, it's... Yeah, now now I now I put on the like the pre-recorded voice and I go to bed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I can I can I can, yeah. I can dial down my enthusiasm yes. and take a take a nap before I have to work work in like an hour. <laughs> so um uh... Yeah, well, uh, gra- glad to have you on board, Jack. Uh who are you? Um uh, what are you all about? and stuff i i'm jack i do a as um tim has grace gracefully mentioned that i uh host a podcast on spotify called the middle section with good buddy john uh we just talk about movies and we talk about shit and it's a good time um yeah no it's a lot of fun i just i don't really have too much to say about myself because uh that's pretty much it it's all pretty much summed up in that one sentence but um no, I, I just want to thank you very much for uh, having me on. Of course, yeah. I mean, even before I came on as a guest on your podcast, I've always been a fan of you and John's shit. Um, thank you, man. You know, it's, yeah, it's the podcast that you guys have. It's just very casual. It's very entertaining. So, you know, it's just really fun to sit down and listen to, you know, and then invite uh, you guys had me on to talk about Spider-Man 2. That was and, wild. You know. I just do that on on a daily basis anyway. I just scream at people about Spider Man too. So thank you for giving me that out. No, and we needed so. we needed that avenue because I've I've seen on the news of of this guy called Timmy on the news just screaming in public about Spider Man too. So we bet I thought we'd best channel that into an actual podcast. So we got him on board and we had him we had him uh, on for Spider Man too, which was it, I think that's flat out that's one of my favorite episodes we've done because there's some we oh, ca- really? we captured some absolute madness in that episode. Um, oh, it was. I mean, I I did mention how much I hated Speed Racer, so I guess that was one of those moments. So. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's right on the trend of I I love Timmy to death, but good God, do I hate his film takes. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna find my not uh, a single film take... take Timmy has done that I've liked. Every single one of them I've thrown up. <laughs> that's th- and that's not an exaggeration. Yeah. What, that Shrek, is like are you a Shrek too, Hayden. <laughs> Timmy, Timmy is the anti-Jack. And even if, oh. yeah, yeah, if you, if Timmy hates he, a movie, that means I like it, and vice versa. Yeah, if I think something <laughs> is mid, then Jack thinks it's like a masterpiece, and like the other way around, and just like for everyone in general, because it's John has like expressed some frustration with me as well. So, um, yeah, uh, yeah, but that's that's awesome. Uh, so what do, okay. what would you We've say? All had that moment. With Timmy. Yeah, we will. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a phenomenon. I'm not a person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what would you say uh, are some of your favorite movies? Uh, and what are your, some of your least favorite movies, if you have those? Oh, least favorite. Uh, actually, well, I'll go favorite first because that's probably easier. For, uh, off the top of my head, two favorite that, like, my two favorites that keep going back and forth, honestly, is, like, uh, a big fan of Brian De Palma's Blowout. 
Mm. Um, and mm. uh, Michael Mann's Miami Vice. They're, they're the two that you can catch me nice. non-stop fucking talking about. Like, <clears throat> I've been removed from uh, from public buildings just because I won't shut up about those two movies, honestly. The, like, um, It's like, oh, that Miami Vice guy's back. Just get him out of here. Um, no, but mm. least favourite. <laughs> True <laughs> <cinephile>. <laughs> um, Least favourite. Oh, I don't know. I, that's, I hate a lot of shit. I hate a lot of shit. Um, mm. I don't know. That's <laughs> any a... of Timmy's favorite movies. <laughs> T- yeah, Timmy, can you name your four favorite movies? Because that's most likely my four least favorite. It's a Clockwork Orange, I think. <laughs> okay, uh, I yeah, that. I haven't seen that yet. Clockwork, Clockwork Orange uh, adaptation, Spirited Away, Perfect Blue. I think those are like the they're, things they're that bangers. I have on my letterbox. Yeah, they're bangers. I can't so, disagree with yeah. that. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I have good taste. Don't don't <laughs> doubt me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, never, never. But I'm sure we'll talk about that soon, sooner or later. The, the, the back and forth that of the film takes. Uh, okay. Yeah. So. <laughs> so what are your? So do you not? So do you have like um like a specific like hate film that you think of when I when I say like because I like I've made it very clear that like Dragon Ball Evolution is a oh, piece okay. of shit. I just absolutely cannot stand. Yeah, so, okay. like, do you have something like that? You know yeah. what's funny? I don't. I don't think I have a specific movie where it like keeps me up at night, where I'm just like, like, my it boils my piss sort of thing. Like, I it, it's nothing like that, <laughs> but it's just like sort of the movie that keeps popping into my head for some reason is um, what's that fucking one that came out like two years ago with The Rock and uh, Ryan Reynolds? <laughs> Which one? Oh, uh, <laughs> is it the one where he's Gal in the Gadot. jungle? Because I know exactly what. Red, oh, Red, Red no- Notice. Red Notice. For some reason, yeah. that movie keeps popping oh. up my head, being the worst. I that I've, about that's that. probably the worst movie I've seen in quite some time. But I don't know why. You could honest. You could honestly say that about any movie starring The Rock. Yeah. Like, if you think about or it. Or Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> yeah. Or yeah. Gal or Gadot. Ryan Reynolds. Like I think Free I Guy think was I... even fucking worse than than Red Notice. Oh if yeah. I'm being honest. I think Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. In terms of the movies he's in, I think Ryan Reynolds has it worse than The Rock. Mm-hmm. Um, mm, yeah. Yeah. Like. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. No. Nothing that Ryan Reynolds has been in like the last five years has been good. Um, Except Deadpool two, I guess. So. That was fine. Yeah. That yeah, was okay. Nah. But I don't know. Yeah. Nah. Um, I, I just really fair, want the Rock. The Rock was in Moana. That was a pretty good film. Oh yeah, he was so... too. I haven't oh seen that yeah. yeah. At least The Rock's been in yeah. one good movie. Right. Like, I mean, movie. are we counting <laughs> yeah. Fast and Furious five and seven good movies as well? I would never call them good, but they're entertaining. Possible well, movies. no, he was yeah. in he was in Southland Tales, which is phenomenal. Oh yeah, that's a good segue because I that's that was my next question. So, <laughs> so. So if you listen to our podcast about Southland Tales yeah, uh, <laughs> and how much we all hate it, yeah, yeah, I think we all gave we all gave it a one out of ten, and I know yeah. you really like it. So I just am very very curious to hear your thoughts about Southland Tales because we just me, I guess we just yeah we just story to me <laughs> yeah like because honestly I don't even remember the story either. It was just a nothing experience. I y- you'll need to explain to us what you like about it because like we were struggling to figure out what people got out of this movie. It's so just so <laughs> I say so I've only seen it once and I and it sort of stuck with me because it's just so baffling. Um, and I think, like, either you could take that as a good way or a bad way, and I think the general, like, thing with it is people are taking it, like, it's a 50-50 thing, like, people are just fucking, like, angry at this thing, because nothing gonna make sense, and I mean nothing. There's, like, two, uh, what's his name from American Pie? Um, uh, Sean William Scott? Sean William Scott, there's two of him, for some reason, isn't there? Isn't there two of him? Yeah. I think he has so. a weird <laughs> musical number as well. Yeah. No, no, no. That was that was no, that JT. Was, that, that was, was Justin JT. Timberlake yeah, yeah. Oh. doing yeah, the killers. Yeah. Oh, yeah, my bad. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Um, <laughs> no, but it's just. It's so, fine. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. It's just so different, and maybe because I have a slight bias, because um, Richard Kelly is like, I don't know. There's something about that man because Donnie Darko was like an all timer for me in high school. I, I grew up fucking obsessing over Donnie Darko. Donnie so, Darko is great. Yeah. So maybe I have a slight bias because I'm like, yeah, Richard Kelly, he did Donnie Darko. Like, whatever he makes is, like, amazing. So, I don't know. I'll have to go back and rewatch it. But I did, like... I thought it was quite funny because I was like, oh, these boys did an episode on Southland Tales. No one talks about their movie. And I watched it and I was like, oh, no, they hate it. 
So, um, yeah, no, it'll be interesting. <laughs> it'll be interesting to go back and and uh, reevaluate it because um, I remember liking it. And and don't get me wrong, I can see, I I do see why people obviously um, <laughs> shoo it away a bit because it is it's a whole hell of a lot. Yeah, I will say this about the movie: uh, The Rock has a more hilarious performance in that one than any movie that he's been in that's technically labeled as a comedy oh definitely um <laughs> yeah his his little weird antics and ticks with his hands oh, was for... genuinely hilarious oh, yeah. yeah i mean not in the way that they wanted it to be hilarious but i just found that really amusing <laughs> so right uh, yeah have you seen the um the the other film that richard kelly's done oh the after box southland tales yeah, what's With, that um, one like? I haven't seen Cameron it. Diaz. I haven't seen that either. That's been one on my watch list yeah. for quite some time. I think he only Cameron did those Diaz three. is in that. Yeah. I didn't even. Yeah, no, he hasn't done any since then. No. I, I, I've never seen it, so I'm. Yeah, I was curious to hear your thoughts. You, yeah, you boys got to uh, do the Richard Kelly, tr- the Richard Kelly trilogy on the podcast sometime. That'd be great. I wouldn't re. Yeah. Oh no, you guys have already done okay. Southland Tales. Yeah. Yeah, we already. Yeah, <laughs> 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 I, I'm good on that, but. <laughs> Oh, I man. wouldn't. I wouldn't mind rewatching Donnie Darko. I haven't seen that in a it's very good, long yeah. time. Yeah, it was like so. it was like the ultimate like um, like I was the most annoying prick in high school with that movie because I was like, I was I was the there was no bigger obnoxious film bro in high school than me. Like thinking like wow. Pulp Fiction and Fight Club were like the greatest cinematic pieces of art ever made. And like, oh, Donnie Darko, this is... Oh, you, you, I know. you really were that kid. Uh, yeah, I was... <laughs> I, I'm lucky I lived through high school. I'm, I'm, I'm sure as hell in another life I would, I would have been killed through, like, a, a, an enormous beat-up. I'm still going through it, man. <laughs> <laughs> but you're almost done. You're almost graduating, Jules, as... as Hopefully. Uh, as, Hopefully as, our, as Luca is your aunt and I'm your Uncle Ben... Uh, oh, don't get shot! Except oh, I didn't God. get shot. Except I don't. Except a <laughs> thief doesn't you steal my car <laughs> and shoot me in the chest. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, so, I don't know. You're in America. So. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I guess yeah. so. Yeah, I gotta go to a. Uh, I gotta go to thirteen reasons why dot info to not start a school shooting or whatever. Oh so. my God. Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh uh, well, thank you for your insight on Southland Tales. I mean, that still hasn't. I don't think that's changed any of our opinions, but uh, I'm, we, I'm glad we got to at least hear your thoughts. Yeah. So. Oh, well, I'm yeah. glad I, I can't spread take. The good stuff I can't take any movie where someone says "suck my dick" or "I'll kill myself." Seriously. <laughs> what do you say? I say that every I can't, day. Yeah. Do you? I, oh, I yeah, quote. Yeah. Uh, I quote. I'm a pimp, and pimps don't commit suicide at Fuck least six yes. times a day. So. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. And remind me why it's so. a bad movie, boys. You're right. We're <laughs> wrong. Retroactive ten out of ten. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. You know what? Opinions aren't linear. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway, uh, do you guys have any questions you want to ask Jack? Or what's the deal with bunning sausages and why are they great? <laughs> I thought Luca was gonna ask and that. And why one. are they shit? <laughs> yeah. I was Still Luca's ask question. It. <laughs> why? Do you guys yeah. not have hot dog buns? Is that like? Have you guys not like? No, we just stumbled have white bread. that. No, com- no, no. We that, have that hot concept dog. yet. We have hot dog buns, but yeah, why choose that when you have white bread? Oh, so yeah. you actively oh choose God. to oh, yeah. delude we yourself. Yeah, yeah. Choose the white yeah. bread. Hot dog, <laughs> you actively <laughs> hot dog buns are always on the shelf, and 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 you can never find white bread anywhere because everyone's buying white bread to put in the put to put on their sausages. I I just don't yeah. understand. It's like the whole point of hot dog buns existing is to <laughs> yeah. put. Is to put you hot dogs in them. You might as well not make that. <laughs> yeah, like you might as well just like not what's the necessarily you could what put is like the meatball, point? meatball subs in there. True. You can make it into a yeah. There sub. we go. Yeah, but that makes more sense than like. I, but no, even then, that's stupid. Because like the whole concept <laughs> no. of meatball subs right. is that you put them in like uh, meatball subs are like they can either be sandwiches or you can put them in hot dogs. Okay, fine, whatever. You know, like you can go to Subway and get a meatball sub. But like the whole purpose of a hot dog bun's existence is to put sausages in it. So like if you don't do that, no, then what's the bread. point of it existing? Too much bread. The ratio's all off. Yeah, that's what um, I said exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, like, it's like. It's like 60, 60 40 percent. Exactly, of and you just get a mouthful of bread, and you're like, "Oh, this is terrible." What a bu- what's Bunnings doing over there? Home. Oh, they got they got bread. Uh, yeah, let's go to Bunnings. Are you guys on like Atkins or something, where it's like you can't stand all these carbs or some shit? Or? <laughs> yeah, Australia's a very odd country. <laughs> yeah, but like, 
like your, your the white bread, <laughs> it just gets soggy and it's so. Oh, it tastes so good like, though. No, it too, doesn't. It's too it flimsy so for the the so Oh my it god. Nice and why and white yeah. bread? Like soggy. I would, I would at least be amenable if it was whole wheat bread because that's bread that actually has whole grain hot dog. Because it actually <laughs> has flavor. Because it actually has flavor. You know, like white no. bread is for fucking babies. Kind of white bread is for babies. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're not specifically searching out a particular type of bread to taste the hot dog. It's all about the sausage, my man. The bread's just the side bit. Do no, you but like to, to eat whole grain fairy bread. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually heard of fairy bread, and look, I'm I'm saying for dessert. If you say that that sounds disgusting, then I'm gonna be, I'm gonna actually scream. I'm hanging up. We've already talked about fairy bread and all this shit. Like <laughs> the last. Yeah, no, we just wanted time. we just wanted to get another Australian's perspective uh, because we weren't entirely sure if like jules was like on drugs or something or like was delusional or something but like okay like this just confirms all of australia is just delusional i guess i think the goal <laughs> of this podcast now is to find the person that doesn't like white bread uh hot dog from You'd australia you'd be very hard pressed honestly yeah no yeah. it's like you i think you're just automatically kicked out of the country if you don't like that combo <laughs> i think that's the rule around here I've, that's what i've heard are those the three requirements? <laughs> you need to put hot dogs on white bread. You right. need to like, uh, what was the, what were the, what's the yeast called that you guys eat? Uh, Vegemite. Vegemite, yeah. What's and the then... yeast you guys eat? <laughs> 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 and then you guys. Vegemite's more controversial though. Like there are plenty of people here who don't, yeah. who don't like Vegemite. Yeah. Oh wait, like, have, that's have more you ever had the, the Vegemite chocolate? Oh god, I forgot about that. Jules, do you remember this? <laughs> oh, <laughs> do you remember? That? Yeah, no, no, oh, no. God. I remember that. I remember that. What a, now. What a dark age. Yeah, for that this country. That was us at our lowest point. Yeah, that was that was a really fucked up era yeah. for Australia. Not Actually, that, that, the yeah, that made, caused a real stir in the country. The veggie made Cadbury chocolate. Oh yeah. god. Actually, that's because now in our we've got like two major sort of super chain uh, supermarket chains. And one of them now is like Coles. doing like a Vegemite flavored like roast barbecue chicken. Um, I haven't oh, had God. I haven't had the Which balls one? to try it yet, but I don't think I will. Maybe on one very very. Which drunk one is night. it? It's uh, I think it's Coles who are doing it. Oh, you bitches, Coles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm from America, and we don't have anything like that, so I just have no point of reference for any of this. So, um. uh, we're doing good advertisement for the country. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I do want to visit it at some point. I, I'm sure I'll fly by oh, yeah. it on my way to you... New Zealand or something, so, you know, so. <laughs> Stop by for, like, one hour. Yeah, just to go <laughs> to, take a, you to Bunnings. Yeah, Jules and I will take you to a Bunnings. Okay. Yeah. It's just... You know the first thing you see when you drive into Melbourne? <laughs> it's, like, it's, yeah, it's next to the airport. the Gold Coast is a Bunnings. <laughs> yeah. No, the airport is a Bunnings. So yeah. is... <laughs> <laughs> Is is Bunnings like it's, the? It's just one giant sausage sizzle. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Is that what? Is that well, the no, equivalent of like a, um, Bunnings Craig? is like a hardware store, but like oh. it's tradition that there's always a sausage sizzle outside. Yeah. To the point where it's actually become more known for its sausage. Yes. No one like goes to Bunnings for like tools else. anymore. People just go for the sausages. Oh. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's kind of like um, it's kind of like a gas station, like gas station food, or. Like, no, um, no, no, no. No, because it's like made by... It's like a charity thing, isn't it's it? Better. It's like a gold coin donation thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like a different different charity every week when yeah. I used to go. Yeah, like sometimes you okay. swear they're just making them up. Like, what? <laughs> oh, yeah. The Drop Bear Foundation? Okay, I guess I'll donate. <laughs> <laughs> Charity is just oh, like yeah. a foreign concept in America, so... <laughs> Somehow the, um... The United Australia Party got it one time. Oh God! <laughs> I went to the Bunnings. <laughs> and that was that was the one time that, I, that there was no one at the sausage sizzle. <laughs> That's the best. <laughs> Only real Australians will know will know what That's that means. That's fucking amazing. I had no idea about that. <laughs> oh man, that's hilarious. Yeah. Mhm. Mm yeah. Well. <laughs> I'm glad you guys have all this stuff in Australia. You have all the, you have this shared yeah, pride and nationalism. Yeah. One of yeah. these days we should bring on a, another South African so that we can see. There we go. Yeah. Her shared. We did. We did. 
We already well, did. We brought but you guys, on. but you guys weren't pro South, South Africa enough, though. That's the thing. So, <laughs> well, but there's we need, nothing really. We to need a be. bigger Patreon. <laughs> yeah, we, we need. You, we, you just need to ask a controversial question about South Africa, but no one knows anything about South Africa, so no one can like ask me anything for me to get patriotic enough. And I can only ask <laughs> and the even Why so, do you I don't know how pa- patriotic I can be about what? this country. <laughs> like, <laughs> Luca, what's, what's the, what's the, what's your equivalent to a Bunnings? Uh, Builder's Warehouse. I love Builder's it. Builder's Warehouse. <laughs> Alright. Yeah. Yeah, we've all got one. Yeah, last yeah. time I checked, Home Depot doesn't sell sausages, <laughs> so, at least the one where I live. Yeah. So... <laughs> Yeah. The Ain't thing no is, Bunnings sounds like a hot dog place. Yeah, like, it does. It bun in the title. <laughs> like, like I thought, I thought it was yeah. like Craig's oh, or something. Shit, you know, I never like, even thought about it like that. You know, the best. <laughs> yeah, part like, is, actually, the second p- best part about Bunnings is the free cardboard boxes at the end. Oh yeah, yeah, that Jules. You know, really yeah, you remember this, man? That's elite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. They still do. It's been a long time since I've gone into a Bunnings. Um... But yeah, they always had free. I'm, go- I'm gonna go there tomorrow. Yeah, just, no, just let's meet sausage. up. Let's meet up and we'll go bunny topic. Let's do it. Um, yeah, but they always had go. free cardboard boxes at the end, so it's like the best place in the world. I know. Yeah, mm. it's a place at bottom and the top. The, employ- the employees there are truly saints. <laughs> they are. They're they're the backbone of this country. God damn it. <laughs> then the bottom and top can finally reach in the middle <laughs> yeah, right <laughs> mm. well yeah well th- yeah well thank you uh jack for answering all of our insane asinine questions unless anyone else like had something else they wanted to ask no cool. right. yeah so awesome i'm well, glad, yeah, I'm thank glad you. to that answer was... all the bunnings questions that's what i'm here for yeah <laughs> I, I wouldn't have asked that myself because I, I still don't know what a... Bu- I mean, I know what a bunning is now from that conversation. We just but, talked like, about it for three hours. Yeah, I know, <laughs> but, like, there's no there's, before, there's like... no equivalent of it. And as an American, I can't re- relate to anything unless there's, like, an American experience. We haven't even talked about a movie. Yeah. <laughs> we, yeah, but maybe we should go into the yeah, news. That's, the true, that's okay. the true sign of friendship when you don't talk about movies for, like, 20 minutes. So. Right. <laughs> that's how we Aussies are. We just vibe with oh, each we other. Vibe. We yeah. just talk we're about bunnings forever. Bunnings. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> what the fuck did the dad say from uh, the castle? Uh, just the vibe of it? It's about the vibe. Yeah, yeah, that was it. Yeah, yeah. Taking the serenity. It's about the vibe. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you know, Jack? I've actually been to that house from the castle. What? That specific one? The yeah, the holiday at Donny Boot. What, what, what's it, that place called? At Bonnie Doon. Bonnie yeah. Doon. Yeah, yeah. Bonnie Doon. <laughs> I've driven past it so many times. That's brilliant. Mm-hmm. They have a sign out front that says Serenity on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Is it in Melbourne? No, it's it's in Bonnie Doon, which is kind of like on the outskirts of. Okay. Oh, not on the outskirts. It's in the country. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, anyway, let's get into the Oscar noms because Jules was very yeah. insistent on, on us talking about this. Um, so. Oh yeah, I was expecting. I was. I'll be honest. I was kind of expecting before I saw them that it was going to be a bit of a shit show. But, but it was like surprising. It's been pretty based this year. Yeah, it was yeah. surprisingly okay. I mean, you know, they didn't nominate the whale for enough things, which fucking sucked. Yeah. And decision to leave no got j- jack shit. Yeah, no after sun either. But you know, whatever. No, no. As what far the fuck? as yeah, no, nope. Yeah. yeah, but like I don't know. Yeah, like, but no, sat, they didn't even shortlist so... it for best sound. Yeah, the Academy doesn't like horror movies because they're for like gamer brain beta males or something. I, I don't right. Know. So, um. But yeah, I I mostly found out about the Oscar nominations through uh, Luca's live stream, so I was like, oh wow, I don't have to look this up myself now. I can just watch this shit. <laughs> so uh, yeah, no, I'm really into like looking at the award stuff and doing predictions and stuff. Right. So mm-hmm. yeah, your face, Luca, when Triangle of Sadness got nominated was really funny. <laughs> My yeah. face when it got nominated for you lit up and I was best very director. Happy for you. Out of all things, <laughs> I was like, "Holy shit!" Yeah, they best really, director like... and best picture. That's like, wow, wow. like fucking. Ruben yeah, Aslan like, gets yeah. it, but James Cameron doesn't. Fuck you, James. Honestly, could not be more based. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I guess. 
I guess Pak Chan Wook can like eat a bag of dicks, but Ruben Oslin just gets all the nominations. I'm, I'm not that I'm mad yeah. about that, but like still, Steve I'm sure yeah, we can share the party. Yeah. <laughs> the decision to leave Snub was like holy shit. Like, it was for oh, nothing, wow. not even for international. Yeah. Fil- fil- like okay, I yeah. get like RRR not getting anything because India just decided not to nominate the film just in general, but like decision to leave getting nothing like go- come on like really like that was one of the best directed films of, of last year like eh, whatever so if they were really if they really cared it it, sh- it should win best director genuinely yeah it's like okay seriously top gun maverick getting a best adapted screenplay nomination are you fucking <laughs> joking that, with me that, right wait, now is that real yeah, it got yeah. a best adapted. Wait. Like, what writing? What writing did it have to to justify that? <laughs> wait, wait. Before yeah, that we... should have been the whale, honestly. <laughs> Before we get into it, you you guys are gonna have to fill me in as we go because I I pay I do not give any shits about the Oscars. I think it's just the biggest bullshit thing ever. So you you but oh, yeah. I had no idea about that Top Gun Maverick thing. Is that real? Yeah, it absolutely. Yeah, I, I, yeah. At that yeah. rate, I was shocked that Tom Cruise didn't get like a Best Acting nomination because that's just fe- it felt like that's where the direction was going. Like I was right. so upset. <laughs> and he's genuinely like, good in it. We could have nominated The Whale for Best Adapted Screenplay, but no, fuck you. Like we got Top Gun Maverick. Like <sighs> that's something I found out about the Best Adapted Screenplay category because you'll notice that there's a lot of sequels in there. Like Glass Onion is nominated for Best Adapted Screenplay. What? Because it's a sequel, it's technically building on the original right. material, which makes it an adapted screenplay. Oh but my like, god. Is, but, is, but like, that doesn't make sense, though, because this is a wholly different, like, right. mystery and story. Like, the only thing that's the same is, like, Daniel Craig doing a Foghorn Leghorn accent. Like, that's about it. Like... I, it, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. It's like it's like when they nominated it's like, it's like when they nominated Borat two for like best adapted screenplay that one year. It's like really like they did not do that. Okay, they did. They no, could have nominated. I'm thinking and, and the girl from it for best actress. Stop it. Yeah, they could have nominated. I'm thinking of ending things for so many things, but nope, fuck that. We got Borat two. So and Netflix didn't even submit it for anything. Wow. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh my. Yeah, no Christ. Netflix didn't even submit it. Those fu- Then what's the point? <laughs> this is the Oscars. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Nothing makes sense. Do you want me to read out the? Do you want me to read out the best pictures then? All right. Yeah. Do that. Okay. All Quiet on the Western Front, which was pretty good. I think which we, is t- good. we talked about it on the podcast. Yeah, we talked about that. Avatar: yeah. The Way of Water, because Woo! the Academy likes James Cameron. <laughs> uh, Banshees of Inner Sharon. Love it. Like yeah, yeah, it's a good movie. Yeah. And, it de- and it and of course it deserves it. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. it's a good movie. Uh, That's honestly the one that I think should win win Best Picture. It probably like, won't, but I I, I wouldn't be I upset don't think if it, it will. did. Yeah, but so yeah. yeah, I think yeah. Elvis, this is the one that I really don't want to win. Bad. I I I I, I, hate, I, 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 I don't Elvis. get. I hate Baz Luhrmann. He's like one of my one of like my four mortal enemies. Like I can't stand his approach to filmmaking. I lit like oh yeah. Moulin Rouge was fucking insufferable. I could not sit through that one. Like right. I barely he made it out of alive. This country. I thank you, Jules, for saying that because I hate him. <laughs> and Elvis was so fucking unbearable. Like the first like forty minutes of that movie was pretty good. I I'll admit that. But then you realize there's like two hours of movie left, and then you just sit there and you go, "When the fuck is this gonna end?" Like, I'd like to go home soon, you know. <laughs> so. <laughs> and Tom Hanks, obviously, in that is. Oh, incredible. he's doing like he's on another planet in that movie. John and I were talking yeah. about that today of um, Tom Hanks's performance in that movie. I think it's like, I want to say admirable because he's just on a different field. It's so it's such a weird fucking performance. Um, I think I love it. It's so goofy it's that it's so good. bizarre. <laughs> and, he, and, he, and he looks like Mr. Burns from The Simpsons, and he's doing and he's got this <laughs> weird voice. It's so bizarre. Um, surely he wasn't nominated for anything, was he? No, he wasn't. No, I don't think no, Tom no. Hanks. That would have been the Academy was shocking. Too weird that oh, yeah, yeah, because he yeah. he's so weird in that movie. But anyway, sorry. Even Continue. and he was even, in like the fat suit as well. Uh, yeah, and even right. it's like we're only nominating one actor in a fat suit. We're not nominating <laughs> another. Okay, <laughs> you only so, get one pass per year. Yeah. So yeah, Elvis is bad. I I did not like Elvis. I don't. Jules and yeah, Luca, definitely my I, le- my least favorite out of the nominations oh you've mm. seen it jules i thought you didn't 
No, I saw it. I, okay. I saw it at the beginning of the year when it came out. So, Luca, you're the, the only young, one. I was the youngest person in my theater. Oh, oh. my theater was a bunch of boomers. I, 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 <laughs> yes, my, my theater was also filled with boomers. I was like, well, I guess this movie's not for me, I guess. <laughs> so. And an Elvis impersonator played before the film. Yes. I was like, what the uh, fuck is going on? Brilliant. Yeah. yeah. Luca, you haven't seen Elvis, right? No, I haven't. Okay, it's... Are you don't... planning on watching all of the best pictures? I'm planning on it, but I don't know if I want to watch Elvis. I mean, like, I'll might... watch Top Gun and and Women Talking, but... Women Talking's the yeah. only one that I haven't seen. Yeah, it's the, also the only one I haven't seen, because it's not playing anymore. Oh, wait, no, shit, me, so... I haven't seen The Fablemans yet. Oh, Because fuck yeah. Steven Spielberg. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> Whoa, damn, uh, okay. Yeah. He's only the guy who made, you know, that one indie film about a shark, and that's about it. I don't think he's made anything else. Yeah, well, I, think was, was I think he's a fucking hack. Woke garbage. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> fucking yeah. amateur. I think he made a character that he made a bunch of sequels for. I think his name is Indiana Smith or something. Some, know, yeah, and he wears, so. a, he, wears yeah. a, he wears a hat. Why does he name it after a state? Right. Yeah, what a so. nerd. Mm-hmm. Anyway, keep going right, with the uh, get... best picture noms. Yeah, Jules. Uh, okay, everything, everywhere, all at once. Perfect. Is, no. Fucking perfection. That should win. Overrated. Yeah. What? Oh. <laughs> this is what I mean. Tim and I disagree a lot on movies. <laughs> what? Yeah. You cannot. No. You cannot say that, Jack. You cannot fucking say what? that. No, sorry. It okay. is kind of overrated. Quick, quick, yeah. No, thank you, Luca. No, quick story. <laughs> I. I oh. had. I had no, no Luca. That, you gave it like a nine out of ten. Or <laughs> yeah, you gave it like an eight or a nine. What are you talking about? I, I had, gave it an eight. I had COVID. Still doesn't right? mean it's overrated. I had COVID <laughs> last year, and I was like, oh, I can't wait to get back out to the movies once I'm better. The first, like my first day out of isolation. All right, John's been telling me to go see everything everywhere all at once. I'm gonna go watch it. And about twenty minutes in, I was like, oh, I wish I had COVID again. <laughs> no, okay. that's you, a bit that's much. that is <laughs> no. no that you cannot no, 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 say no, that. A, no, that's a bit. No, that's no. a bit. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, it's not. It was that, the first ten minutes. It's not that bad. It's it's fine. I think it's fine. It's it gets a bit annoying. Um, but I don't know. I the I think I'm just allergic to the Daniels. Because I yeah. I didn't I didn't I didn't give a shit about Swiss Army Man either. See, that's what I that's thought as that. well, because I, I thought Swiss Army Man was, like, fine. Uh, yeah. And I still haven't seen The Death of Dick Long, uh, but I know Luca enjoys that. Oh, movie. did they do that Now, too? The Death of Dick Long is, is fantastic. Only one of them like, did it. Yeah, so... Yeah. But it this one... It's one of their projects. Yeah, but this one is, like, a fucking masterpiece, you know? Like, okay, like, even if you don't, Actually, like... Actually, like incredible like it's genuinely like it was it was like i think number three on like the top 250 like letterbox like narrative like feature films or something and it was rightfully deserved because like there is so much going on that like even if you don't like the quirkiness of the film which is a fair criticism to have Mm. i think there's just so much on a deeper level that's just like that's just so resonant that like you can't deny like people smart writers who clearly care, like, really crafted something amazing. And plus, the the fight scenes are amazing. Like, as someone who grew up on, like, Jackie Chan, like, Hong Kong action movies, like, it felt like a throwback to, like, one of those old, like, Jackie Chan films, like Police Story or Drunken Master or something like that. So, um, but at least that's how I felt. No, I can see yeah, what you're I, just, I, yeah. I, I literally knew yeah. nothing about it. I went in blind, and I was like, Oh, this looks interesting. And then I, well, I was like, "Whoa, what the fuck? This is what is going on?" And then I, I, I loved it. I, yeah, I saw uh, it three yeah, times. Just... That's how much I loved Holy it. Holy shit! I, I, I saw it with three different people. I was, I was in love with it more and more. So, wow, yeah. nice. Mm-hmm. So, but I, I, I don't want to derail this conversation. <laughs> so keep going with the, um, pop, uh, Oscar noms. What else is on the? The, the docket, Jules. Yeah, uh, yeah. The Fablemans. Uh, still haven't seen it. Yeah, neither. Uh, that was good. I'm sure it'll come to Disney Plus soon or something. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I really have no interest in watching it in a the theater at this point. Like, yeah. I whatever. mean, it was, it, was, it was better than I was expecting, but yeah, I wouldn't say it's like amazing or great or anything like that. So. Right. Yeah. yeah. I'm watching it for David Lynch. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, yeah, that's right. I keep forgetting he's in that. 
<laughs> so you want to be a picture man. Well, the only the only way you can do that is by getting off your fucking phone. <laughs> Get real. Eat some cheese. Yeah. <laughs> I love uh, David Lynch. Yeah, I love him too. So I still need to see more of his movies, yeah. I haven't seen anything past Blue Velvet, um, so I gotta get on that, so. Okay, watch The Straight Story. It's one of his more underrated, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Uh, Okay, Uh, Tar, as expected, probably. Yeah. I think it has a good shot of winning, actually. Yeah, Um, I wouldn't be surprised if that won. That one, Tar was amazing. I really love Tar, so. Yeah, uh, I really loved it as well. I can't wait to see it again. Mm -hmm. Um very slay um okay uh top gun maverick <laughs> yeah i mean yeah not surprised yeah so yeah it was gonna happen <laughs> I, I like the film I, I, yeah I, actually no i don't like the film a lot but I, I just like the film it's fun it was enjoyable like the the plane scenes were fun to watch like i'm not gonna deny that but what I didn't like was anything that wasn't that. So, like, all the scenes where they just talk or play, like, homoerotic football on the beach or oh, Tom so Cruise's good. weird love interest with Jennifer. Con- like, all this shit I was so bored with and I did not give a fuck about. I was like, just go back to the fucking planes already. Like, Jesus. So. <laughs> mm-hmm. so. Okay. Uh, Triangle of Sadness, which is... I think Luca's favorite to win. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, I don't know. I don't, honestly, Banshees or Triangle, Banshees is better? either or. Oh really? I you... I'm not sure. Honestly, I genuinely cannot. I don't know which one I like more. I really? love I th- both of them. You'd be fine with the really well. I honestly think, just in terms, like, like I think, McDonough actually deserves it more. Because mm-hmm. I feel like Ruben Oslin still has, like, a banger. Like, several bangers in him. But, like, Banshees is, like, one for the ages, you know? This is, like, a... Like... Yeah, I don't know. It's just, yeah, like, I, so special in what it is. I would so. agree, because I, I think this is his... I think Banshees is his best film. I definitely liked it more than yeah. um, Three Billboards, which I also really loved, but... Yeah, Three Billboards was definitely awesome. Definitely better. Three yeah. Billboards is great. And I haven't seen In Bruges in a very long time, but I think I liked this more than In Bruges. I would need to rewatch that one. In Bruges is still good. Mm-hmm. Confirm, yeah. So I still haven't seen the one he made between In Bruges and Three Bills. Oh, Seven Psychopaths. That's, that's his, that. I, yeah. That's solid. It's a good movie, but that's easily his worst film. Yeah, so. I agree. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. Yeah. So was that it, or, or were there more? Oh no, um, there's more. Um, there's, okay. Oh, there's one more. Which is um, women talking, which I haven't seen. Yeah, that's the only one I haven't seen. So um, yeah, I was surprised I that think... even got in there. I thought yeah. the whale was gonna get it. Me over too. Women talking I thought the whale because... was gonna get that for it as well. Yeah. So I thought it was yeah. gonna be that um, the Woman King film. I thought that was gonna get like a I... shit ton of nominations, but it but it didn't get oh, any. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it didn't I was like get preparing any, myself it. that I would have to like watch it finally because I just couldn't right. bother doing it. Yeah, yeah I was I was so disinterested. <laughs> but now I get with to the avoid. Friend. Now I get to avoid it altogether. Yeah, <laughs> I have to watch it. I'm just glad that I've seen nine out of the ten Oscar no- uh, Best Picture noms because now it, it d- doesn't mean I have to like force myself to watch a bunch of shit that I had would have had no interest in seeing otherwise. Like I remember when Luca and I made our. Um, best picture nom video last year i was like forced to watch a bunch of shit like belfast and coda and king richard and all this other shit it's like i would not have seen those movies if they weren't nominated for best picture so yeah yeah this this year apart from like elvis um i think it's like a bunch of like really really good stuff yeah i would say elvis is the only oscar bait movie in in this list yeah so i mean i think the the fablemans looks kind of oscar baity it doesn't be yeah i haven't yeah i guess so yeah no it is kind of yeah okay (laughs) yeah but like it's still even though i didn't like it like it makes sense why it's in there right yeah and like you know the academy fucking loves steven steve's little passion project you know why not let him have it you Mm -hmm. know yeah he's been doing a lot lately lately it's it seems like every director yeah. is just having their hold on. You, you're telling me I can make movies about myself? Hell right. yeah, let's do it. Yeah, yeah make movies so, I've been yeah. wanting to make for ages. Yeah, 
Uh, Do you have like ja- James James Gray's little um, self guilt movie Armageddon time? Oh God, I completely <laughs> forgot. I saw that movie and then it immediately exited my mind. It was such a worthless experience. I didn't care I for know. it. I don't remember anything about it. So. I went and saw it with my with my mom and my grandma on like a whim, and I was like, eh, this is kind of boring. Surprised they uh, didn't nominate uh, Bardo, considering they gave Alejandro like all the award, all the Oscars yeah, yeah. They, for. They, went, they, seem, they really like Alejandro. Yeah, mm-hmm. but it only, it only got like one. Bardo, think, Bardo like, got cinematography. cinematography yeah. Nomination, yeah, which makes yeah, sense. Like the cinematography in that sense. film is really, really awesome. Good. Yeah, so mm-hmm. the cinematography was such a weird one when I was <laughs> like. The, just the nominations, like like Empire of Light got a nomination, which was bullshit. And Elvis, Jesus. which is like why? Elvis getting a nomination for <laughs> fucking when the camera editing. Just spins and flings around. Yeah, it's yeah. like it, it's like it's like it's like the Wachowskis. It's like Speed Racer. It's like if you just do some fucking wacky shit and spin the camera around, apparently you have good cinematography. I guess so. Yeah, I'm yeah. gonna keep my mouth shut. I know, I know. I, and Elvis, <laughs> Elvis, Elvis got nominated for best sound as well. Elvis got nominated for best editing, which is fucking absurd. Like, That's are you fucking oh. serious? Is it cause two for it... two Bohemian Rhapsody? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> apparently, if you have a lot of editing, that means it's best editing. Yeah, like, I was just okay. Say that. Yeah, I, I've it's only literally... seen Elvis once, but I remember the editing in it being fucking insane. So I was just, yeah, I was literally about to say it was that so means it's like it's hyperactive. What? Yeah, just because it's hyperactive means it's good. There's a lot of shit just flying around. The right. camera twirls around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like nuts. that's like the thought process of the Academy. That's the only reason why they nominated Bohemian fucking Rhapsody for best editing because it's baffling. like, oh my god, and somehow it won. Yeah, it's oh, like, oh my god, there's insane. so much editing, so it's got to be the best. Like, right? Are the is the Academy run by morons or some shit? Like, what oh, the yeah. hell is going yes. on? Yeah, yeah, they yeah. Are. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they are. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we are not denying this. No, yeah. no, no. Always has been. No, yeah. I think if you walked into the academy headquarters right now, just be a bunch of chimpanzees just flinging their shit at each other. Like that's what's going on right now. It's just it's it's yeah. always been like I've always just stood by the fact that I think the Oscars are just the biggest like bullshit thing. <laughs> None of it matters. And the four twenty awards is where it's at. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And I've been called monkey brains, and then you compare that to the Academy voters, and I'm like a fucking genius in comparison, so. Yeah. Did you guys see um, Disney's For Your Consideration campaign for Thor Love and Thunder? That was hilarious. Is that real? I I, I thought it... Oh, you haven't seen it? I haven't seen it. I swear to God, I thought... Thor, Ra- sorry, what was the new one? Love and Thunder. I thought that was gonna get yeah. like a best visual effects like nomination or some shit. They did. They tried to submit that. For no best way. Effects. And that was <laughs> they hilarious. Tried to, um... Oh god. <laughs> like Chris Hemsworth for best actor for <laughs> Thor: Love and Thunder. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? Taika Waititi I- for best director. I mean, they it's tried. Not like... they, they submitted it for that as well. No it's way. Not- Holy it's shit. not that asinine because they tried to like nominate the Lion King 2019 for a bunch of like no. stupid nominations. I think they tried. They nominated. Ironically, they nominated it for everything except best animated film. But everything that's what it got it nominated. Best animated feature. And that's oh. what it got nominated for. So I'm. Yeah, I put it in the chat. Oh my god! Here we go. Holy shit! Do you see the? Do you see the one um, best supporting actress, Jamie Alexander? Oh she was like God. a random character who had two lines in the film, no and they tried way. to submit her for best supporting actress. Oh wow. my God! Like that joke was so good. Yeah. I mean, it worked for Black Panther. I guess so. Oh, yeah. Angela <laughs> Bassett has mother. a best supporting actress oh. for no fucking reason. She I don't has even the win as well. I don't even remember her character. Like, I literally forgot she was in the movie it, until, like, all these nominations, like, came flooding in. Like, what did she do? Like, apparently, if you just, like, s- just just cry, you like... a grieving mother. Yeah, if you just cry <laughs> enough times and scream loudly, you get an Oscar nom. Like, at that yeah. rate, why don't you just nominate Zoe Zaldana for Best Supporting Actress? Like, <laughs> I was gonna she, make that joke. She honestly gave a better performance than Angela Bassett anyway, so, did like, you... I don't know I don't know why you didn't do that. I can't, so. oh, yeah. I can't speak Did you guys this, see that, seen, um... Either. Zoe, what's her name? Zoe Saldana. Zoe Saldana. Yeah. She she has like the world record for being 
Yeah. The only actor that has starred in four plus movies that have grossed more than two billion dollars at the right. box office. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And honestly, oh, good yeah, on her. Yeah. 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 yeah like slay. Wait, like like two, oh cost two billion. Yeah. She's point. picking yeah. the good ones. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Bet, yeah damn. Yeah, like does. yeah. I bet she I picked bet up the... on the Marvel train when it was still kind of building steam. Right. Yeah. Back when yeah. they were good. Back when. Yeah. <laughs> back when they had had something had had reasons for people to go see in theaters. Um, so. Yeah. I won't lie. I keep looking back at this for con- for your consideration, Marvel list, and it just makes me sad. <laughs> yeah. No. It's horrible. I was shocked. I was shocked that Black Panther two didn't get a nomination, considering that Black Panther got a fucking Best Picture nom for some reason. So. Right. Well, out of the three effort. Marvel movies this year, that was the best one. I swear to God, I thought there was more oh, I than that. Seen it. I didn't. There I thought probably they were was. Good at... No, yeah. that's the thing. There probably was, but we'd, it's just it, it exited our brains, like because there's just yeah, it's too much. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, mostly based picks. Uh, <laughs> definitely better than last year's. That's for sure. Um, but definitely. Yeah, like at a... least with these ones, like there's like. Like, at least like five, like at least more than them. Blah, at, more than half of them I actually like, and then the other ones I can see why they're there. So, mm-hmm. like, yeah. yeah. I these are movies that I'm either passionate about or I can see. I I can understand why people are passionate about. You know. So. Yeah. Exactly. So. so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just I found more shit for Thor: Love and Thunder. Oh, oh my god. god! That's that's oh fucking embarrassing. That is genuinely embarrassing. Who the fuck <gasps> gave it five stars? <laughs> Roger <laughs> Ebert, like a YTD's agent. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Armand White. <laughs> Someone on Letterbox, they just take yeah, their yeah, review. Yeah, yeah. yeah Vision I was gonna say, <laughs> quote by Kevin. They Feige. sorted by highest rated. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. <laughs> I was gonna say, I was gonna say Ben Shapiro, but he was probably bothered by the fact that like Natalie Portman had like muscles or character. whatever. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Anyways. Anyway, well, we I'm just move on. yeah. I'm <laughs> just glad yeah, that's enough Oscars talk. I'm just glad the <laughs> yeah. Oscars uh, didn't drop the ball. Speaking of things that fucking dropped the ball, uh, we saw <laughs> Megan, the new good segue for M Threegan. M Threegan, the new M- yeah. horror indie PG thirteen darling or fucking whatever. Yeah. Um, uh, sorry, I I should have referred to it James as Wan. I should have referred to it as uh, Chucky for baby girls. Like that's really what the movie was. It was. It the was the yossification of Chucky. Yeah, yeah, the yossification of Chucky, like Chucky <laughs> for babies for for fucking infants. Like that's really what it was. Yeah, um, yeah. TikTok via and, Chucky. Yeah, and uh, it was god awful. It was it was atrocious. I could not stand this fucking film. Um, what did you guys think? <laughs> Yeah, I thought it was I thought it was really bad, but my god, I had a good time watching it. The Hell crowd, yeah. The crowd um, in my theater was so it was just having a great time. They see, all, I wasn't feeling that at all, but I'll 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 wait until everyone else like has their <laughs> intros, yeah, so. Yeah, the movie was was fucking bad though. Yeah. <laughs> it sucked. Luca, what did you think? Um I honestly <laughs> I was not paying attention a lot of the time. <laughs> <laughs> and I recorded a reaction for this movie. And, like, even then, like, like you know in, like, movies when, like, there's a loud explosion and then, like, the, the ears of people just go, like, ee! Like, that was, like, me throughout this whole film. It was just, like... You like that one <laughs> gif of Homelander where he's just, like, passively watching the, the film. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, uh, more like... More like I'm just like looking into the void, and like, like it was just such a a nothing movie. Like, yeah, it was just. No, I wasn't even like that. I wasn't like the Homelander <laughs> gift. I was like, I don't know how to describe it. Like, my mind That's was just elsewhere. Gift. You just it my just entered just your elsewhere. mind and then immediately left. It like <laughs> flew like like a fly like came out the one ear and flew right. out the other ear. Yeah, yeah. like. Like I was hyped for this movie. I was I was actually so hyped for Megan because I thought it was gonna be campy and fun, and then it was unironically like... as well because it has the same screenwriter as Malignant. So I was expecting yes, exactly. something like that, but it was yeah. like the complete opposite of that. So, right. but anyway, yeah. I'll, and I'll... Then it was like 
Oh, sorry. Yeah, it go starts ahead. off campy, and then it like tries to play itself straight for the rest of the movie, and then it even, isn't even a horror movie until like the last fifteen minutes. And yeah, no, I just, I just had like such a bland experience with this film. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jack, yeah. what did you think about Mithrigan? <laughs> well, I was actually... I was walking into my screen and, go, like, going, what the fuck am I doing with my life? I'm about to watch Mithrigan. <laughs> like, what? Like, I really... I, I, I gotta get a grip. Like, I gotta, you know, I gotta meet a girl. Like, I gotta do all this shit. Like, I'm almost, like, in my mid-twenties. What am I doing? And so I came out, and I was like, you know what? That was fine. That I think the best word I can give it is passable. Um... Although I don't think that's very high praise. I think... See... Uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to yeah. say, I think this was... This reminded me too much of... And I think they were released um, too close together. This reminded me way too much of that 2019 Child's Play we got. Um, like, oh, with Mark Hamill. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Mark Hamill one. In terms of like, oh, it's like Child's Play, but it's like for kids now. And it's like, you can connect your app to this fucking doll and all this crap. And it reminded me too much of that. I'm like, uh, you know what? I would have probably liked this movie a whole lot more if two things. If one, and I think it's rumoured that we're going to get an R cut of this thing. Um, eventually, sooner or later. So I think why didn't they make an R cut just in general? Like I, I, know, I was watching I know, yeah. the movie and I was because so Universal fuck- pictures are a bunch of pussies. Yeah, yeah, because Blumhouse is run by a bunch of pussies, I guess. Because like when I was watching the film, I was like, I could see a really fun, stupid, campy, goofy R rated like oh, yeah. like malignant. Like yeah. I could have seen like mal- like a malignant version of this film. Yeah. And because they've got everyone, they've got James Wan, they got the screenwriter of Malignant. Exactly. But but the end result is just the most boring piece of shit ever with like only like 20 minutes of like good entertainment like the last if the last 20 minutes was this whole movie like <laughs> then i would agree with you jack i would give this movie a pass i'd be like okay you know it was stupid and you know idiotic but at least i had fun it, it at least like took itself like not too seriously but like right. th- that scene where the little girl is like crying about her like dead mom or whatever and like Megan is like con- comforting her I was genuinely laughing out loud. I was like there's no fucking way this movie when thinks she it's like singing, I Yeah, oh my god. I yeah. genuinely wanted to leave at that point. I was like no fuck you can't do this. You can't do this to me movie. I'm, uh, I'm yeah. so mad. That's when I that's when I was all in. I was like I have to see this through. Oh yeah. This yeah, is, yeah. This is amazing. I think I would have liked this a whole lot more like if um as i previously said if that child's play the 2019 one d- d- was never a thing if that didn't exist i think i would have given this um i would have liked this a, a little bit more but it just see, reminded me even too s- much of it see i didn't even see that new reboot of child's play but it sounds like i wouldn't even like it now it's not really bad it's not okay it's it's really not good is it yeah. better or worse than the mithrigan um probably a, probably a, a bit better but I, okay. yeah i'm Barely. gonna say better too because you get mark hamill doing some wacky deliveries and the and the doll also oh, there's dumb blood as fuck. in it like they actually yeah and, it's, to, and they literally go for that they go they go they go all out with the rating um, okay but, but it'll be interesting child's get... play has never been afraid to do that because that's like a core part of what right makes, yeah what makes child's play yeah yeah, yeah. they have to so they have lots of blood right yeah, so apparently um, this was, like, originally a R-rated film, and then yeah. they, like, had to cut stuff out because <coughs> they thought it would, like, appeal more to, like, the TikTok audience when it started blowing up on Twitter and so stuff. So babies, so they wanted to appeal to babies. <laughs> yeah, so, so apparently there is, like, a lot of cuts, and like Jack yeah. said, there's, like, an R cut. But, like, I was watching an interview, like... Um, from dead meat uh, like the horror youtubers mm-hmm. um and and they like like the the main the main like host of the channel was uh interviewing like james wan and jason blum and he was like so is there any alternate cuts of this film or is this just the film and then and then they were like yeah no this is just it this is all we have this is the movie there wasn't any oh, altercations shit. or anything yeah that's yeah. so bullshit. like now i'm I not sure that. Yeah. yeah i'm not sure which is real right. which is no, not but you can I, it tell, sounds like cause... absolute horse shit yeah because yeah, no, if you like... watch the movie there's like that sequence where megan is like 
fucking the bully up in the woods and she like bites his ear or something and you're like oh you can tell there was gore there but they cut away you could tell there's stuff in this whole movie that they've like like, which is such a pussy thing to do like i came to watch a horror movie to see blood and gore and this is like the complete opposite of that you know like you can tell there's like really off-putting cuts where you're like oh no that scene was supposed to go a little bit longer but there was like a really distracting cut right there and that was the few moments in the film that i was like entertained like i was like oh well like thank god finally like something like entertaining is happening but then not only did they cut away from the violence they it it was so short it was like no megan's not gonna be the one who kills this like fucking dipshit kid no a car kills him i was like oh my god like really (sighs) movie like you were just about to get fun you know and like (laughs) I don't have anything against PG-13 horror movies. Like, I think if if you have the right people working on them, they could make it work. Like, like Drag Me to Hell. Like, Drag Me to Hell is a great PG-13 horror film. But, like, yeah, the people working on this example. movie are just a bunch of fucking morons who, like... I, I don't even know what they were going for, honestly. Because, like the commercials that they had be like oh like like fucking furby is or whatever the (laughs) commercial like some shit like that right they had like a parody of a commercial but then they take themselves so fucking seriously for like 90 percent of the movie and then in the last 10 percent they just felt like okay you know now we've gotten to the part where you know mithrigan is like gonna kill people so let's just have fun with it i'm like there's just no consistency here it's like such a tonal mess it's like Either you want me to feel take this seriously, or you don't want me to. Like you can't, ha- you can't do both. Like you can't throw shit like, you know, like this drama about like getting over loss, and then just like Mithrigan like crawling on all Ripping fours a like a fucking dog. A yeah, you can't do both of that shit at the same time. Like pick one. You know, like you can't have both. Yeah. Who directed this? Yeah, it was just like. I don't, I don't know. know. Like a first time director, I think. Okay. No, so. one of, no one of note. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, they, I thought they've it, I directed thought other films she... before. Oh, really? Oh, what really? else have they directed? Uh, I I don't know, but I know I know they ha- they have directed other horror movies before. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. Why didn't James Wan direct this? Like, I I think if James Wan had directed Aquaman. this himself, it would have been so much more fun. It would have been it would have been like Malignant, yeah. So. Yeah, I yeah. would have been so. I was hoping like it would turn into like more of like an action film. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'd love to see like Megan being shot at with like a shotgun and she's like, <laughs> walking onwards. Oh, like, yeah. Man, can you imagine they get like a Terminator Two reference in there with? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh like, my god. Like I'm glad. I'm glad you mentioned that, Jack, because that's what I'm hoping that they do with this sequel. Because apparently they're making a sequel where oh, it's like greenlit that, haven't they? Yeah. They make like they've got a uh, release date for it already. <laughs> yeah, they oh make like God. a they make like a T one thousand version of Megan, and so like Allison Williams and like the white girl, like they need to like bring back Megan one point oh. Wait, is and, this like, confirmed? No, like this is what I want. Is oh, what I'm saying. Okay. Like this like, is like my happen. dream. My dream. If I was writing the plot for this piece of shit sequel, yeah. then like that's what I would do. Where it's like Mithrigan is one is going to be like the T eight hundred, and she has to protect. Uh, the white people uh, from like the T1000 <laughs> like Megan 2.0 or whatever that's like at least how I would write this piece of shit so okay. yeah. yeah I'd be on board with that I, I just reckon with my with my cynical brain I reckon they're gonna do uh, Megan 2 but it's a boy Megan and they're gonna fall in love and they're gonna be a, a <sighs> dynamic but that's that's they might happen. not do that because then they that they did that in um, Chucky, so they they want they don't want to look like they're plagiarizing true. Chucky. So <laughs> okay, true. What do you that mean? Maybe... They already did that. They yeah. already did that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, basically, but they don't want to look more blatant. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they don't want news articles to crop up that's like this is a ripoff of Curse of Chucky. Hmm, suspicious. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I. I, it, watching this movie kind of reminded me of our Child's Play discussion that we had, like, on an earlier episode of the podcast, where Child's Play isn't a good movie. Like, I'm just going to admit that straight up. It's not but, a good movie. But there is at least a lot going on in that film that, that, the film, that it has going for it that, like, really makes it an entertaining film. Like, it's, like, weirdly, like well directed and has some like really like wicked shots and like the film doesn't take itself too seriously and like the gore can be satisfying brad duraf yeah and it's like then you compare it to this shit that's what helps sells it yeah and then you just compare it to this shit which just feels like blumhouse picture number 675 you know like 
this isn't as bad as like truth or dare or anything but it it feels like it's like the same kind of thing right like you know what i mean so it's a t it's a tier above like those fantasy island like uh truth or dare types it's like it's not as bad but it's definitely not great um yeah i don't know what is blumhouse is like uh their thing just like cranking out just crap like just yeah just crap <laughs> yes making cheap them... shitty horror movies cheap and then make crap. a ton and then make a ton of like if they got their and hands then occasionally on the... they accept they and occasionally they accept like a banger movie like they funded <laughs> a whiplash yeah <laughs> they don't like to though but sometimes they will yeah and get oh, out fine, we'll give they you must a good movie. Uh, fine, that must right. be that must be why Blumhouse and Jordan Peele don't work together anymore, because Jordan, because Blumhouse yeah. was like, "What? You made a good movie? What the fuck? Get the fuck out of here!" <laughs> right? What the fuck's a good movie? We I don't, don't know what that is. Get out of my office. Yeah. <laughs> Unironically, Whiplash is probably the scariest from Blumhouse. Unironically, I agree. Do do I that? agree. <laughs> yeah, they they probably yeah, wow. Blumhouse. Yeah, yeah. That's probably their best film that they've ever. Wow, they've ever I didn't know they did that. Their, um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Is that before yeah, they did that? Is that before they like? Did their horror thing where they were just doing horror? No, this, no they, they were still doing horror movies. The same year oh, as okay. they put out Unfriended. <laughs> oh, Unfriended. Dude, this is Dark Web. <laughs> Yo, Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is uh, is this better or worse than uh, Blumhouse's previous thing, which was, I think, Halloween Ends, right? Or Kills, whichever one we're at right now. I did not, I did not bother to watch Halloween I haven't seen it either, so, so I, I couldn't can't tell you. It. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I don't care either. So, I saw um, the second one. I was like, "Yep, I'm done." Yep, same. <laughs> I didn't yeah. even bother. I didn't even. I didn't even bother with the second one because the first one was a piece of shit. I was like, "This is it." Like, okay, like I was. Oh, and yeah, I was my, like, my one of my friends tra- has has said unironically that the that the 2018 Halloween is actually better than John Carpenter's original. Oh, no, no, you can't say that. Oh no, I know. I That's mean, like... it's less boring. <laughs> <laughs> what? Luke is giving the hottest take out here. So many <laughs> controversial oh my God, opinions in this episode. Take. The first Halloween is so boring. <laughs> no. And no, that, no, I'll, leave that. That. I, I'll leave it at that. I'll leave it at that. I don't want to get into this. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can feel the fear come through the mic. Look, can we at least all agree that John Carpenter's best is the thing, and then move on? Or yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, Escape from Los Angeles. Is. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I haven't seen a whole lot of his other movies as well, but like the thing is like my favorite from him. So yeah, yeah. Obviously. I just love how we're just doing our best to not talk about Mithrigan because there really <laughs> to not is talk n- about Mithrigan. <laughs> yeah, because there's literally nothing. Yeah, I there's nothing else to say. Like, like we I don't should re- move on right yeah, now. I don't remember. I literally don't remember what else happened in the movie. Like, I genuinely forgot. Like this, this movie is like a fart in the wind. It just like it entered my brain and then immediately <laughs> left. I just I don't remember anything that, that happened. Be, that should be the review on the DVD box when the physical release. Comes out. <laughs> a, fart, a fart in the wind by timmy lee so if you think that's a fun entertaining <laughs> romp then then go ahead and watch this shit so uh, yeah i i just wish like james wander Wander- praise for 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 movies on the back of the dvd cover <laughs> right. i was gonna say the movie was a fart in the that's wind the best fart they could films watch. three out of ten that's probably what was on the blu-ray cover of like jack and jill or some shit so a, a fart in the wind <laughs> two out of ten instead of a one out of ten yeah no no i mean like armand white i think gave it like a five out of five or some shit right am i wrong or oh my god <laughs> what, <man? laughs> well, i don't what? even have to fact check that and i know that's true no uh, jack and jill because armand white oh. he loves he loves shitty adam sandler comedies but he hated uncut gems or something get like the that. fuck know. out who is this yeah. person <laughs> you don't know a- armand white Dude, he's like a literal meme lord. Oh. He's a literal troll. So he is the biggest address. contrarian in the film in the film review space. Okay. He's, um, he <laughs> gives God. he gives bad reviews to everything that's good, right. and then he gives good reviews to everything that's bad. Yeah, and he also puts. He also rates his films based on how much he agrees on the politics of it. He ga- he called oh, Man dear. of Steel his he called Man of Steel the Godfather of superhero movies, and I'm like, what the fuck does that even mean? <laughs> like, you're full of <laughs> shit. So, and, then, <laughs> and then when Zack Snyder told people to vote for Joe Biden, he like lost his mind. Yeah, <laughs> like his whole world shattered. 
<laughs> he was crying. It was like you Got could funny. feel the tears in his article. Uh, anyway, right. let's let's fucking move on because I'm already done talking about this shit. Uh, I'm giving this one a Mathrigan out of ten. Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> th- that's good. about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm also giving it a mid three gun out of ten. Is... <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, three. three. Uh, you should have said just... three. You should have said three gun out of ten, Luca. We could have. We could have. Nah. <laughs> I don't want to copy other people's jokes. <laughs> yeah. I'll give um. I'll give three gun three gnarly dog bite marks on the arm out of ten. Oh yeah, I forgot that's about the dog go. thing. <laughs> that's the one thing that stuck with me for some reason. I was well, like, that's Ooh, because, that would hurt." Well, yeah, because that's I, as <laughs> as a dog lover, I I I always get tensed up whenever dogs get hurt in any way possible, like regardless of the movie. Right. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, but like, so my feeling about that scene like happened in spite of the movie, How not do you because feel about of it. Amoris Paris. Actually, no. That's a that's a scene that I'll give praise to in the movie is when Megan dumped that fucking like thing of acid on that woman's face. I was like, yeah, get it. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I guess awesome. so. I was more, I was more, I enjoyed it more when she like blasted her backwards with the hose. I was like <laughs> laughing my ass off. I just had more. I had more fun with. Um, um, with Megan running around with like the machete um, when he was chasing after the guy from the Daily Show. Oh right, uh, yeah, that was very good. <laughs> yeah. That was very I good. Yeah. he was in that. I was just like, why wasn't this the whole movie? I was just confused. So yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, speaking of confusion, uh, for a young me, uh, we saw <laughs> our recommendation, uh, which was my turn, I guess. Call uh, me by your name. Uh, sure yeah i guess so <laughs> um recommended a double feature of makoto shinkai uh anime films i've been meaning to do this for a long while and uh, i'm glad we're finally doing it so uh yeah uh i guess we're doing your name first unless someone is like dying to talk about weathering with you first or something or no we'll get to weather we're gonna do them in a release order yeah let's I do guess- it canon order as well it, it really is <laughs> canon order i mean if i really yeah. wanted to I would have recommended the Garden of Words also because there's a character mm. from the Garden of Words that appears in your name, but whatever. I just didn't want to do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, before yeah. before we begin, uh, I want to ask Jack, what are your general thoughts about anime? Because I know Luca and Jules do not give a shit for it, and their only yeah. reason I think they've seen more anime because of me than they have in their like general free will. Anime is for babies. Yeah. <laughs> so. like no, I'm I I I do not obviously. <clears throat> I don't think I've seen nearly as enough uh, nearly enough anime as you, Tim. But I do thoroughly enjoy every time no I one watch. Has. <laughs> I do I do love anime movies when when I get around to watching them like I don't know how basic bitch I'm going to sound but Akira is like an all-time favorite for me. Um, oh yeah. Don't I'm feel bad bitch. saying that's, that. That's it's an so amazing based. film. Oh no, yeah, it's, it's I think so it, I think it's genuinely like uh like when those directors were doing like their sight and sound lists of like important movies and whatnot, like fucking Akira is on there for me, man. It's like I think it's just flat out like important more than it is like good. I think it's phenomenal. And now um, Taika Waititi's doing the live action. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, which is which is just just sounds full confidence from me. Baffling, yeah, so. baffling. I know. No, but yeah. I'm a I'm a big manga head. I love my uh, I love reading my manga. So I was I was initially intrigued on watching this double feature because I'd never even heard of these two movies before, and I was really um, yeah. You've never heard no, of, wow. You've never heard even of your I've name. Of no, yeah, never your, heard name? Of your name. Went in completely Your name. blind on both these movies, knowing literally nothing, and yeah, I I I I thoroughly enjoyed both. Okay, well let's 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 do one at a time. Um, but th- but first of all, I would like to say thank you for saying all that because now I have a anime enthusiast on on my side for the first time that just like never happens oh really um <laughs> so yeah uh let's start with your name uh direct written and directed by makoto shinkai um and uh it's basically uh being john malkovich meets eternal sunshine of the spotless mind <laughs> yeah i mean like like uh freaky friday yeah there's, i guess there's so. a whole a whole bunch of shit going on in this one yeah yeah, I was thinking about being John Malkovich before Freaky Friday. Yeah. <laughs> That's how much I love Kaufman. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, there was a boy, there was a girl, 
Um, and they basically swap bodies um, and they kind of live out their lives as, you know, there's a boy named Taki and a girl named Mitsua. They, they swap bodies and then they essentially live out their lives as them, you know, every now and then. Uh, but they learn to eventually fall in love with each other as they start learning more and more about each other. But then there's like this fucking like crazy ass twist that M. Night Shyamalan would have been proud of where like a, a meteor or a comet or something like blows up the hometown that Mita was living in. So it's kind of like a race against time movie near the second half of the film as well. And um, this is a movie spoilers as well. Yeah, spoilers. I mean, we've been spoiling everything, <laughs> so whatever. But like spoilers for these they two know. as well. Um this is a movie that on paper I should not like because when it comes to the anime that I watch this type of like high school romance comedy thing is generally not the first thing that I watch when it comes to the anime that I see yeah it's too good for me and I have a monkey (laughs) brain with low standards but somehow (laughs) And I think it's this is purely because of Shinkai's direction and the way Shinkai tells his stories that makes me super super invested in this sort of thing, you know? Because like if I, like let's the, if first things first, like the the cinematography in this film, like the way it it, it shot, like it could have just done normal like cut between like conversations or whatever, like most other anime or just animated films in general. But there's this kind of like energy to how the camera is moved around and it's like very apparent from the beginning like with that like that opening like with with that opening credit scene where they play that really awesome song from radwimps and like they have this montage of like of of the characters it's like there's a clear energy and passion behind the stories that shinkai tells and i think this stands out from like every other generic like high school anime romance where not only is the plot interesting, but also, like, the way the story is told in of itself is interesting. This is a movie that I, that I have a very special place in my heart for, that I really, really love. Uh, So, but anyway, uh, what do you guys think? So. I thought it was pretty, pretty good. I, you were, you were hyping this up for me, um, (laughs) to me, as, like, some sort of, like, anime modern masterpiece. Um, I mean, I didn't get, I didn't get quite that. Like, I didn't get the ten out of ten from it. Mm. But I, I'm, I really mostly liked it. I was very blown away by the animation. I didn't think it was going to be like that good. And then when it did like the, the kind of like three D bits, I was like, oh my god, this is just beautiful. Never and, before um, have I lost my shit when cans drop from a vending machine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Never yeah. before, even though. I mean, this is from Weathering with you, but never before have I appreciated seeing the reflection um, <laughs> uh, in puddles. Yeah, the animation so always much. delivers on Shinkai's films. Like, he he always dedicates to making the most photorealistic shit ever. It's like his, his movies look so beautiful, even to this day, because this film came out, like, six years ago, and it looks um, amazing. It's so... so- it's so comforting the visuals it's like got this nice warm quality to it whether it be like yeah uh, that's a yeah like characters like sitting in like a dining room or whether they're at school there's like this really nice like i'm like yeah it feels like a warm blanket this is nice there's nothing wrong with this nice Mm -hmm. it's nice place nice scenery yeah i don't want to leave this place anytime soon exactly Yeah. yeah yeah this is the closest you guys to understanding my desires to be in an anime at some point in my life so oh, yeah no and from watching food from watching and studio this... ghibli films always look so delicious yeah they do yeah and i mean like <laughs> like i'm connecting the two movies here a bit but like the the food in these fucking movies like good look god great oh yeah. man like just you just like <clears throat> i just get lost track of like when when characters are having like dialogue driven sequences but they're eating because i'm just like focused on them like oh my oh my god that looks so good like the way it's animated of them just like opening packets or like i don't know it's really like chopping up spring onions yeah oh fuck man like i i need a super cut of that shit i'm sure they're amazing yeah i mean that's the stuff i really oh sorry sorry, go ahead no finish up finish up no 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 i was just gonna say that's like the stuff out of these movies that always like the really simple like everyday sort of the everyday mundane stuff animated in this way is what always like draws me in the most yeah i i want to i want to press press on that a little more but i yeah. want to hear uh, lucas uh, general thoughts first so yeah 
Okay. So I have a history with these movies. Uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Once upon a time, when I was like, you know, a baby film nerd, I thought these were hot shit. I thought these were the best fucking <laughs> movies on the planet. I was like, damn. And now that I've kind of, you know, grown up more and got more in tune with my thoughts and my taste and stuff, I'm not as into them as I once was. Um, but th I still really like them. Uh, yeah, obviously the animation is amazing. It's nice to see an anime with 3D animation that doesn't look like complete dog shit. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's nice to see anime with a budget. And I think, you know, I've never really been into anime as, like, a thing, as a style. The the types of anime that I like are, like, you know, the the Satoshi Kon stuff and the Ghibli stuff. Just because it, it isn't even really anime. It's, like, very different to what It is anime. anime. <laughs> the, the people is, who say that it isn't are just yeah. full of themselves. Family guys it, anime. It, I, it is anime, yes, because... You know, the the definition is, oh, Japanese animation. But, like, mm. it it isn't in the sense where it isn't made up of a lot of the tropes, Cliche. I guess. Yeah, cliches yeah, and tropes. Cliches. Yeah. But what I like about these movies is that they still feel like normal kind of tropey animes. But they're just ones that I've been able to actually connect to because they they do have a layer of, like, budget to them and, like... Yeah, I don't know, like... They're charmingly they're, 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 sweet. I think that's yeah, the best way to say it. Yeah, they're charmingly sweet. Like, they're charming. They still have a lot of the tropes, but it's, like, it's done on a level where there's more care and effort into it. And, yeah, I... 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 I yeah, Your Name, I think... It's a bit too convoluted for what it is. Oh, like, no, I disagree. <laughs> I, I, I totally agree. I, like it's just a a I body swap movie aspects. like like but and like i think for what it is trying to be it is a bit much uh it is <laughs> but you know it, it's it's charming and sweet and like it's still a very enjoyable movie so yeah <laughs> yeah i i guess i can understand the whole it being kind of convoluted but but i i didn't really mind that because i feel like what they set up and how they eventually pay off like i think was really really satisfying like the scene my favorite scene in this entire film is when taki and mitsua meet for the first time like on top of the mountain not in the subway like when they like actually have like a conversation oh, so like that that scene was like littered with like anime like cliches and tropes like yeah. the girl calling the guy like a pervert and it's like you touched my boobs and all that stuff and it's like it's it's very tropey and cliche, but I feel like it, this is one of those movies where it kind Somehow of earns I wasn't that. Annoyed by it. Yeah, it, you're not annoyed by that because it kind of earns it. Like it it kind of it, it's it, this has like been set up since the beginning of the film where it's like you don't really know what's going on and the characters don't know either. But as they continue this body swapping thing, they start learning to fall in love with each other because they like all these like distinct qualities about themselves. They like, you know, the the environments that they're surrounding, all this other crap. And so when they finally meet on top of the mountain, it's like kind of a payoff for everything that's been built up. It's like it's so, so satisfying. And that's why, like, you know, call it cheesy, call it like for tweens or whatever. I don't really care. But like <laughs> the scene where Mitsuo, when she when she falls down and she looks at on her hand and rather than seeing Taki's name it says I love you like it, it's cheesy for sure but it definitely <laughs> earns that emotion it's for satisfying. me it, yeah it's very satisfying it earns those it's, moments it can be enjoyed in the same way that like I enjoy like oh the um the the character interactions and dialogue in like Titanic like yeah it's cheesy but like I feel like it earns it mm -hmm. even though that that's yeah. more like of a phys that's like a a physical like acting performance so it might be a bit different but yeah mm -hmm. you know what i mean and can we talk about the music for a second the music is <gasps> fucking yes. awesome incredible. the soundtrack is incredible like i had never heard of rad wimps before i saw either of these movies but now that i have they're honestly my favorite fucking band ever <laughs> <laughs> yeah no that first song what's the name of the first song that plays um in like the opening credit type thing uh fuck i know i know this yeah it was 
that song of itself was not only a banger, but like the way they use that song in the opening yeah. credits, like the the Kimi the. Wa. That's the song name. Oh, there we go. No, that's no, that's the title. That's the Japanese title of the name. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Not to get like full weeb that's or still anything. That's the, but... the, the song of. <laughs> that's still the name of the song though. <laughs> uh, it's called. I mean, maybe because the English version it's called Dream Lantern. I don't know what the Jap. Yeah, sorry, Japanese version of uh, it. Yeah, but like, yeah, the way that that opening montage credits like was was cut together, the way it was edited, and like all those like swooping like shots or whatever, like that that scene where like Taki reaches out for his hand, and then it fucking zooms to Mitsuha like reaching out for her hand as well. It's like it's so awesome, you know. Yeah, it's yeah. like clearly someone gave a shit when it came to like the look of this film and i'm like not just in terms of like the animation itself that looks great also but like the way the camera moves and the way like certain scenes are shot it's like so so great like a movie like this doesn't deserve that kind of nice cinematography but the the fact that it does like makes it so much more special right so. and and mm-hmm. the cinematography makes definitely the world works. feel more alive i think yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And the cinematography really does go hand in hand with the actual love aspect of this movie too cuz I'm mm-hmm. I'm an absolute sucker for like the 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 sweeping emotion type uh type shit movies. Like that's why I like gravitate towards like uh like James Cameron's movies or like uh yeah, some Hell same yeah. game in Chazelle movies but like um like that's the stuff that really that I really gravitate towards and good god does this movie just like the 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 whole love aspect to this thing with um I don't know it was just like I'm going to keep saying the word nice because I think that's the best word that I can use to describe it and it's like it's just super cute too of like them working hand in hand in each other's bodies like sort of like doing each other favors um it gets pretty clever too with with that aspect Oh, yeah, it's surprisingly clever. Yeah, I'm like, oh, that's really smart from, like, a writing perspective. Of, like, he, Mm. she's helping him get a date. And then, like, yeah, it's, like, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's his own wig man, but also is jealous of the fact. Yeah, Yeah. so. I was like, that's really (laughs) clever. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. And I like that montage uh, where they play the, uh, the 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 most famous song of the film, the Zen 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 thing, right. where they have that montage where they're like going back and forth, you know, like Mitsuo is like really good at basketball or whatever, and um, Taki is getting really close to his crush or whatever like that. I, the first time I saw that film, I was kind of like thrown thrown for a loop. I was like, whoa, like what the hell is going on sort of thing. Mm. But I think the more times I've seen it and the more I think about it, I was like, that's a kind of effective and energetic way of communicating so much information in such a limited like span which i i know that's like the point of a montage but like (laughs) something about the way they did it in this is like really smart and really clever um because like you know it's like it's a it's a problem with it yeah it's like it's it's a it's a i think it's a much smarter movie than people give it credit for you know like Mm -hmm. it some the the the, sometimes the plot doesn't make sense like why the fuck didn't either person realize that they were in the past or the future i don't know but i didn't really think about these things when i was watching the film Mm -hmm. but that's just me the whole connection between the past and the future also just doesn't really make a lot of sense at all yeah i was like what's up that came out of (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah Yeah. (laughs) they had their own little back to the future moment where they went back in time yeah exactly (laughs) that's what this movie was missing was doc brown yeah, be like, Taki, Mitsua, yeah. we gotta, I, I need it's to come back kids. with me. <laughs> we gotta go back. <laughs> yeah, he comes accidentally had to blow up the town because he came in the DeLorean too fast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the comet. Yeah, that's what caused the comet. Yeah, that was the comet. <laughs> he accidentally, like, hit, a, hit an asteroid in space and be like, right. nah, I don't think that will, like, cause any, like, catastrophic damage to the Earth or anything like that. Right. Who, who cares? <laughs> yeah. So... Yeah, and it was uh, like, don't look up. That's what I was thinking. I I saw your review, and I was like, that's exactly what this is. This was like, don't look up with the Adam McKay <laughs> film. But if it wasn't a piece of shit, if it right. was like actually funny and endearing, you know. So yeah, yeah, yeah that's a good comparison. I can see that. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a <laughs> that's really clever. Any <laughs> film with a where a meteor crashes can be can be technically compared to it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's like a Roland Emmerich film. Like in any dinosaur yeah, movie can be called Roland Don't Look Up. <laughs> <laughs> that whole montage of just seeing nothing but destruction, I was like, okay, this is suddenly like Roland Emmerich was like on board at this stage or something. He just took over. 
Yeah, when that when that actual meteor like crashed into the town, I just like stood up and like w- and like looked out in the window and said, "Damn, Makoto Shinkai did in like ten seconds what Roland Emmerich has been trying to do his entire career, and the dude should just step yeah. down." <laughs> like, how do you how do you even make movies after that? Like, that's embarrassing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, how did you guys feel about uh, the characters themselves? I thought they were endearingly cute Good. yeah i was yeah. i really liked um what's in Misa, misahu um, mitsua that was not even mitsua. close to yeah. what i said yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, don't remember. <laughs> I remember taki's name because it was it was short um yeah Mits- mitsua um i really liked her character um i explained everything about her i got to know most of everything you need to know about her like from the opening like 10 ish minutes mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um i i wasn't quite as sold on like taki's character i wish they had focused like a bit more on him for, like a i agree yeah like a, a bigger amount of time like i wanted to know more about his relationship with like his dad and stuff but like his dad just kind of walks out of the apartment the first time i saw yeah. this film i didn't realize until three-fourths into the film that like he was like an artist like he was into like landscape design or whatever and i was like Man, that yeah. would that would have been interesting if he was like a central focus. But at the same time, every time I oh, think wait, of was like, he? I thought he was just doing random sketches. No, that's what he was. Because like when he was applying for jobs, he was applying for jobs as like a landscape artist oh, or something like that. I didn't catch that. And all yeah. like, but at the same time, I'm kind of personally, I'm kind of glad they did because every time I think about landscape artists and anime, I think of Goro Miyazaki, and that just makes me mad. So <laughs> <laughs> I would rather not think about that. <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 I agree with what you're saying. I feel like could Taki have gotten a little more character of development? Like I sure, like I'm not gonna deny that, but like I think for what he has going for him and I think for what the film is going for in general, like I think he has enough character development where I'm invested in his shtick. I'm invested in the romance between Taki and Mitsuha. It's like I, I think there's enough going on that I can yeah, I can like I mean, suspend my 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 disbelief and like really like immerse myself into you know so. Mm-hmm. I think the the thing that really sold it though was just like the the relationship is like, so so strong and developed. Yeah. That's like ah, oh, it's sweet. Yeah. These people are in love and like, that's that's all you need to kind of like invest me enough. Like yeah, even if his character was like missing a few bits of development that he really should have had. Mm-hmm. I was um I was also really impressed, maybe even more so than the characters themselves, but like sort of the adult situations they were both put into, which I really wasn't like expecting, like um like even down to like the minute sort of uh funny details of like them both like waking up in different bodies and like oh my god I've got like boobs now or whatever or like oh my god I've yeah. woken up and I've <laughs> got like a is boner. that just a thing that happens like, in oh. his movies? Yeah. yeah, I was like that's that was, <laughs> that's the like, thing that happened in Weathering You, and I was like. Is this just a thing? Yeah. This no, is just that's Japan. Japan. That's just Japan. That's just an anime thing where it's like you're One... looking, you're looking at my boobs, aren't you? And it's like, yeah, that's just a trope in anime. Which okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought that was trope. like a really like adult detail of like her waking up in his body and going, "Oh my god, like what the hell is this in my pants?" Like, so it was like really strange. <laughs> like, you don't get that. Like from yeah. like, it's odd, but I, I I appreciate it on like how like sort of real it was. Like, yeah, that would happen. It's if a surprisingly like, mature yeah. film, yeah. yeah. Sorry, Jumanji Jenna, made yeah. that same joke as well. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! But, but, it, but it felt so obnoxious that it's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, it Luca, just doesn't what, work. Luca, what were you saying? Yeah, no, I like that. Whenever it like cut to her waking up in the dude's bed she would always fall off the bed because she was like used to sleeping on the floor like that was a fun little oh, yeah of course yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. like there, there is a lot of little details that yeah are, that i did pick up on that are like that do make it a little bit charming like i liked in the in the beginning where like the that one contractor like tells the son like hey you gotta go learn how to use explosives and like that comes back in the <laughs> end of the film where oh he, like, yeah i didn't really think plant. about that yeah 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah there's just like a lot yeah, of the nice little details yeah mm-hmm. it's really yeah. smart writing yeah it's like it's very it, it has a lot more going <laughs> yeah no it really does i agree it has a lot of smart writing it's like it doesn't it doesn't feel like it's talking down to its audience you know like oh no i 
it 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 says look this is what's happening and and you just got to follow along you just got to like keep up with us you know yeah, like yeah. and i i appreciate those kinds of movies i hate when movies like keep screaming at me to hold their hands and be like you remember this this is going to be the habit it's like shut the fuck up like just let me watch yeah, the movie yeah like bullet train yeah, ex- yeah. <laughs> i never thought i'd re- re-reference that again <laughs> yeah it's it's it, yeah it, it's it, oh shit what um Sorry, what I, I I was on a train of thought, but then I lost it. Um, <laughs> sorry, someone else say something. I I, I need to re- get we're, on my um, We were talking about bunnings. Oh. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's <laughs> <good>. <laughs> do you do, are you with um, onions on the sausage or not? We're not talking about this. We'll talk about this. Like, we're done talking about this. I want to talk to your name more. Jesus. Uh, I. So I. I, I want to har- come back on the music because, like, the music itself is not only great. Like, we, we we all know that, but I think it's how it's used that's also really great as well. Like, I, I know, Luca, you're not a fan of, like, the stuff that isn't the original songs, but I think some of the original music itself is actually not only really cool, but, like, kind of captures the tone and scale as well. Like, that scene where um, when Mitsua is in Taki's body for the first time and she kind of, like steps into the it almost feels like kind of an isekai sort of thing where like she steps into a whole new world where an isekai by the way is an anime where a a main character dies and then gets transported to a fantasy world in case anyone doesn't know it's it's she cut because she mentions in the previous like scene where like yeah i guess so (laughs) yeah she um she wanted to like be reborn stealing from disney yeah yeah, anime (laughs) stealing from pixar once again um she mentioned in that previous scene where she wanted to be reborn as like a boy in tokyo or whatever and then like when she first steps into tokyo itself like you have that like really sweeping music and you know she's kind of like it's kind of her to get adjusted to everything because she's like she's not used to all these people walking around she's not used to like the the public transportation being like all crowded and stuff like that but like she still has this like childlike sense of wonderment where it's like oh my god like i'm in tokyo like i finally got my wish like i'm in the city of my it's like it's really really effective and like it doesn't like talk down to its audience where it's like she's in tokyo like look see get it no it's like it's a lot of immersion it's like it's it's a lot of visuals that communicate kind of like the feelings that Mitsuha is feeling without have without just saying it up front, if that makes sense. So, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I'm not not a fan of the music. I just didn't really remember any pieces of the score. I I, I only really remembered like when they used the 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 songs um, like by that band. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's fair. Because yeah. those moments are very memorable, and they do use the songs very well. Like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. How'd you guys like the uh, ending of the film? I thought the ending was great. I just wanted to bring this up, um, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it's a bit... <laughs> I think it's a bit, like... <laughs> um, yeah. Um, I was like... I was like, one, uh, of the Australian, <laughs> one of the Australian kids needs to talk first. Whichever one, I don't care. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, well, the third act is kind of where it, like, it lost me a little. I was like, I wasn't as invested as I was. I was like, I was more, I really liked the relationship dynamic yeah. in, like, the first half. But mm-hmm. then and I was like, oh, it's this, the, the, when it first happened, I was like, oh, this is, this is crazy. What are they going to do with this, with this, um weird time time stuff and that this this thing the town actually got destroyed but I, then... um yeah i totally agree I, I i was like really into the movie i was like oh this is like a really cute sort of like love thing like i'm into this and then i remember like i was i was literally watching this today in preparation for this episode and i got up to to go to my kitchen to grab something to eat quickly and i sat back down and they were talking about the world ending i was like what the <laughs> Did I change the movie accidentally? What the fuck happened in those two minutes? I was so confused for like a good five minutes. I was like, did I genuinely like accidentally like sit on my remote and change the movie or something? (laughs) Yeah, I can see that. I, but I, I, again, I'm not mad at that. I, I, I actually think (laughs) that's like an extra, an extra layer that like you wouldn't expect in a movie like this, but like it works. It like, it works really well, you know, like, and I like something yeah and and i and i liked there was still a lot of like that cutesy romance stuff i love how both taki and mitsua have the individual idea 
of visiting each other in real life without having to say like they don't like tell they don't like write down oh hey by the way like i'm gonna like visit you like tomorrow or something like that you know like they they instinctively have come to their own idea about like you know what i love this person so much that i'm willing to like travel for god knows how far to like meet this other person and it's kind of heartbreaking when when mitsuo meets taki like in person for the first time but like it's like because it's like three years in the past or whatever he doesn't know who the fuck this person is he's like what is this crazy lady like doing like (laughs) saying my name and all this other shit (laughs) but it's like but it's like heartbreaking for her because like she traveled all this way to like you know meet his like his 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 like special someone and it just like it was kind of disappointing but i loved that little like cool visual where like um taki's like who the fuck are you and she's like i'm mitsua <laughs> and then they she like takes off the ribbon and it has this yeah. like really fucking cool visual it's that th- i f- totally forgot about that speaking of which like when he drinks like the spit cum saliva <laughs> v- vodka Wait, thing or whatever on. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> that was a me joke. Um, I, I think I think you watched the wrong movie. I think I watched the porn parody of this <laughs> yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't remember yeah. spit come drinking in in my the cut of your name, but anyway. Yeah, when he drinks that, uh, you clearly didn't watch the right cut. Then. Yeah, I watched the uncut version. <laughs> when when he drinks the 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 spit vodka sake thing, mm. and there's this like really cool like almost like Eternal Sunshine level like ethereal vision where he kind of, like, sees, like, Mitsuo's past, like, when she was, like, a baby, and, like, why, like, her and her, her and her father, like, have this sort of, like, kind of crumbling relationship with each other. It's, like, really, really cool. It has this, like, ethereal look to it that I really love, so... Mm. Yeah. Definitely. hmm Yeah, that's just me going on about the movie. <laughs> and, yeah. And the ending, yeah, it's, like I said, it's satisfying when they finally see each other at the train station and they're not really sure how they like interact with each other because technically even though they've met a bunch of times they've never actually seen each other before Mm. yeah not only have they never actually seen each other but they lost like their memories of each other they like it's like the eternal sunshine thing where it's like it's they they don't say something like this but it's a theme that i found really endearing that that was an eternal sunshine where like the heart knows what it wants like you could like erase the memory of the other person so many times but like the heart like if it wants something that then it really wants it and i think like this theme about like longing for something like real like like knowing that someone out there like will complete you but you you're not exactly sure when you're gonna meet this person or like who this person is or whatever like i think that's a very endearing theme that a lot of people can resonate with and so when Mm -hmm. they finally like quote unquote meet each other officially for the first time like they, they, when they decide to take a chance it's like oh my god like that's a really perfect way to end the film like it's that's such a perfect way to wrap things up so it feels I don't earned know too. It feels, yeah it feels earned i agree like them them two meeting like uh like oh yeah especially that sequence on top of them the mountain and like them like walking part it's like a really sort of like trippy sequence too because they're like both I don't know, it's, it's hard to explain, but you guys know what I'm talking about, but they're both, like, sort of not there, but they're, like, they can't see each other, but there's, like, that, that, um... Yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, you know? yeah, it's it's really cool, and I was, like, I was, like, it's kind of, I was getting a little bit choked up. I was, like, oh, this is, like, really sweet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, and that hard cut before Mitsua can, can write her name on his hand. Yeah. That was, like, Oh, God, uh... that shot of the pen falling yeah it almost oh, had like yeah, had right. this like weird like eerie feeling to it too like i was like oh yeah it was like yeah good stuff mm-hmm. yeah i mean there's a lot going for it it's it's such a well-made movie i i'm never bored watching this i will i i've seen this so many times and i will continue watching this so many times yeah so mm-hmm. yeah i'm really i really want to rewatch it it's Hopefully, I get time. Soon. Yeah, you'd yeah. be surprised how many more things that you pick up, you know, as you oh, yeah, as, I'm sure you, I will. as you watch. Yeah, it. I'm sure it does seem like one of those movies where yeah, rewatches would be definitely like yeah, you'd pick up. Pick up and stuff. I and even though I've seen this so many times, I've still found the humor really funny. Like the when when it, both it, this was the case in both um, the the 
when when Taki is in Mitsuwa's body for the first time and when Mitsuwa is in Taki's body for the first time where they're like, like their friends are like are you on crack or something like do, well, right. how do you not remember like where 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 you work or like what classroom you're in or like what your locker room number is or stuff like it's like I still crack up at at, at things like that it's like it's so it, it's not like laugh out loud like stomach breaking like no. comedy or anything like that but it's charming it's endearing yeah, it's I like it yeah. Humor, yeah yeah so yeah well I uh <laughs> th- I, I've I've ranted everything I've, I've wanted to say uh yeah you got your wish Jules you you got to see me be a happy a- angry boy instead of <laughs> happy a happy anime boy instead of a mad a mad anime instead boy of a mad <laughs> ranting boy yeah uh i guess we can get into ratings unless anyone else has like anything else they want to mention or say so uh no i just, just want to say like bases on this one yeah yeah i just want to say thank you for the recommendation because like i had no idea about this movie and it's like one i'd probably frequently revisit Hmm. yeah luca anything else you want to mention or throw out there or um not really i don't really have much to say about it honestly like yeah it's it's just like um like a, a really good teenager movie that I kind of grew out of, but I uh, can still see why why people love it. Um But yeah, like yeah, I feel like some of the narrative stuff is just it it's just it it, it leans more towards like not making sense at all and like which kinda drags it down for me personally. I feel like weathering with you has more excuses for why it's there is more surreal aspects to its narrative but yeah i I still like your name um Mm -hmm. but i prefer weathering with you so yeah but we're We're gonna we're gonna get it we're gonna get into that and because i i i have some feelings about that that you've honestly helped change in me Uh, we'll get into that later yeah so (laughs) but yeah i uh yeah i guess we have nothing else to say let's get into ratings uh and i'm giving this one uh an eight out of ten um it's not perfect by any means of the imagination you know i'm not like giving this tens across the board or anything there are like stupid moments and like yeah the plot doesn't make sense at times but like this is a kind of movie yeah this is the kind of movie where i don't really care you know it's really weird for me to say that because like if this was any other movie like if this was like live action or something which by the way they're making a fucking live action adaptation of this and i want to like Break is Taika my Wachiti chin. directing it? No, but no. they originally got the guy who directed Minari to make the, to direct the film, but he like left because he realized this was stupid or something. I don't know, but like they're still com- <laughs> yeah. they're still committed to making it. J.J. Abrams is apparently producing it, and I'm like, get the fuck out of here! Like, oh I don't want God. after after Cloverfield Paradox or whatever the fuck it was called. I don't want I don't want to see your name on anything afterwards. Like, go home, <laughs> J.J. <laughs> right uh yeah anyway yeah i'm giving this an 8 out of 10 it was great i love it i uh, this is a movie that means a lot to me so sweet yeah uh i'll give this one a 7 out of 10 i mostly liked it but obviously it has some problems but yeah it's a very very well made film so yeah yeah, I think I'm a bit lower than Jules. I know I told Timmy earlier that it was a seven, but no, I think <laughs> no. I think on retrospective and just how it holds up compared to Weathering with You, I think it's a six. It's a good uh, movie, mm. enjoyable, but yeah, I don't know if I'm ever gonna watch it again. Mm. Um, but I mean, unless I it... recommend it again, I don't know. So. <laughs> Yeah, but for what it is, I think it achieves it very well, and yeah, it's just just a cute little film. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. I'm definitely gonna copy what uh what Lucas said just there. Like a very cute little film. I'm just gonna yeah, solid seven for me. Like I think cute's the perfect word for it. It's definitely not like the greatest movie I've ever seen, but it's like it's just a nice sort of uh. <clears throat> sort of these like nice two characters and swept up in this nice little cute warm narrative that i just like sort of yeah i just it was just yeah i really don't have too much to say it was just nice yeah 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 that's the best way to say it it's nice yeah Yeah. Yeah. so and don't get me wrong i'm not saying this is like the greatest anime film of all time like i can mention like seven or eight more that i like more than this but like it's i think it accomplishes what it wants to accomplish very well so wait what is your favorite anime film is it perfect blue uh no it's spirited away 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. that is a good one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Perfect Blue is my favorite. Well, I don't really know anymore when it comes to Satoshi Kon because I go back and forth between that and Millennium Actress. I have Perfect Blue on my fourth favorite right now, but if I rewatch Millennium Actress, it could easily like switch places with it. But that's a recommendation for another time down the road. Um, <laughs> yeah, we'll so, get to that. Yeah. So uh, yeah, now we're uh, let's talk about weathering with you. Uh, so this is Shinkai's follow up to Your Name. Um, and it's basically a Roland Emmerich film, but if Roland <laughs> Emmerich had, like, smarter writers working on his fucking movies, um, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, it's, it's also about climate change, which, for some reason, I just did not pick up on the first time I saw this, but at the same <laughs> time, How I was, you not? <laughs> because I was kind of, dr- I, I was, I was, I was having a couple beers with a friend while I was dr- oh, watching okay. the movie, so, like, that's why it kind of eluded me, but, like, this one, it's what like, is it raining? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> There's <laughs> and, a lot of uh, weather in this one. Yeah, it's almost as if weathering with you is yeah. supposed to mean something. Oh, as, soon as, as soon as I realized, as soon as I realized that's why the title was, I got kind of, I got kind of irritated because I was like, "This is a motherfucking dad joke." <laughs> <laughs> it is a bit, but, yeah. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's it's kind of the same as your name, but not really. Uh, I mean. I'll get into that more later, but, like, yeah, it's, uh, so it follows a young kid named, uh, Hodaka, he's, like, a runaway, uh, and he moves to Tokyo with, like, great dreams, and, uh, he meets, a, a sunshine girl, um, fucking, you know, uh, Hina, the last, a- the last airbender, or sorry, waterbender, I don't know, yeah. it's, like, I was getting, like, Avatar vibes from the last, her. The, the airbender. Yeah, the airbender, she, 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 like, yeah. The clouds go the away. The weatherbender. The weatherbender, yes. yeah. Yes. And uh, yeah, it's start. It's like another romance. It's another like cute teenage, you know, love story. Um, but this one, w- I I think a lot of criticisms I hear about this movie is that like it's so similar to Your Name. But honestly, I just don't see it. Like, I mean, I guess on surface level, it kind of is the same because it's another like romance between two teenage teenagers. But like, I think there's just so much going for this one, and not just in terms of plot, but in terms of like you know, like, the way scenes are structured and, like, action scenes and, you know, kind of, like, the themes that they're going... I think this does enough differently where it's, like, I don't really see... I don't really understand how people can come across this and say, oh, yeah, that was just your name 1.5 or something. Like, I just don't see it. And honestly, every time Luca has mentioned that Weathering With You is better than your name, I just... I just say no. But on this rewatch, I'm kind of in a really? pickle because I don't even know which one I prefer anymore. Because like, because this one, one I this one, I has a lot going for it that I that I was kind of shocked by in a rewatch because I was, and yeah, there's just so much I love. I mean, I'll, I'll get into that later. But like, yeah, what are you guys' thoughts? What did you think about uh, weathering with you? So. Yeah, I mean, I th- yeah, I, I I completely disagree about the fact that it's just like that it's way too similar to his previous film. There is like aspects to it, like the kind of like the where they can't see each other towards the end, and the, they go to this other spiritual kind of place to meet each other, mm-hmm. and of course the fact that they they're just kind of starstruck teenage lovers. But yeah, the the I this one has like it's a lot more like bigger scale and of course the animation's like fantastic but like I just didn't I think it was something about the characters that I just didn't quite connect with this one like as much like it doesn't feel like it has like the same like level of like attention to detail with the characters as the characters in your name did but mm. yeah really i, think I kind of disagree more, honestly yeah i yeah. i agree i'm i'm starting to see luca's point of view on this one yeah but yeah go, uh, we'll we'll save that for uh, later you go yeah. ahead luca yeah yeah um i should say that my power is gonna go off in an hour so you know don't worry it's gonna i have to work morning. in an hour so yeah we're yeah. gonna end this in an hour no matter what yeah so <laughs> um, okay cool oh my word i completely blanked on what i was gonna say oh yeah Something Characters. that we forgot to mention about your name, but apparently Makoto Shinkai actually hates your name. Like he he does. No 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 no. That's that's that a, that's like exagger. That's an exagger. That's okay. bullshit. He hate. He okay. only. He would never do that. No. He would never do that. No, I. <laughs> he would never say that. <laughs> He's a liar. <laughs> Shut up. No. He's you don't lying. understand. No, he was. 
He was just kind of. <laughs> Tim, Timmy was, was like a rabid dog yeah, being let off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 like he just throws his table across the room. No, he's alive. <laughs> Don't make me throw my fucking computer out the fucking window, Makoto. Like, dude. <laughs> uh, no, he was. Um, so, uh, if. If, if, uh, that, for those who don't know, the your name was not only the biggest film in Japan ever, Holy like, but fuck. it was, a, but it was also like one of the big, like, cause I remember I hadn't seen this film until after it came out, but like I remember my friends who had never like seen a single anime in their life went to go see this and then told me it was amazing and that I should go see it and it's like it was a and huge huge phenomenon like this this was more financial your name was more financially successful than Spirited Away. And I guess like the wow. pressure, the pressure kind of like got to him, and he was like, and he was saying like, please stop seeing my movie. Like it's already made so much <laughs> yeah. money. It's already uh, like, okay. please, it's already been please. financially <laughs> successful. It's like I can't take it anymore. It's like wow. your love is too much or whatever. And it's like, really? and I can see that. Yeah, because he, because guys are too good to me. A lot of people. <laughs> And and even I, as much as I love his films, even I don't agree with this. Like people have been calling him the next Miyazaki. Like people have been like nah. putting his name in the same category as Miyazaki. And even he doesn't agree with nah. that. He's like that is a gross exaggeration. And stop saying that. It's like <laughs> he's it's, so humble. <laughs> yeah, he, he hates his he, he hates loves his fans film. so much. He hates them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My I hate are, my fans, yeah, my so I'm going to make another movie made for them. Yeah. <laughs> I hate my fans so much, they keep loving me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but so, as I was saying... How many times like... do we have to teach you this lesson? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my fans are such dickheads, stop loving me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go away. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> why can't why wow. you guys can't you why can't you just bully me? I'd rather yeah. someone bullied me. Stop giving me so much love and yeah, praise. Stop, call stop saying, call my movies me. <laughs> <I'm begging you. laughs> stop seeing my movie. Stop making me rich. Uh, sorry, Luke, what were you saying? <laughs> yeah, so uh, Okay, I'm glad that's cleared up because I was under the impression that he like just dis- he didn't wow, like yeah. what he made in your name. Which is why I just think that, like, Weathering With You just feels like a more polished version of it. Like, like Jules was saying that there's uh, not as much focus on the characters, but I think there's more. Like, like in your name, it's like, okay, one lives in a small town and wants to live in Tokyo, and one is just a random dude who wants to find a girlfriend. But, like, <laughs> in, in Weathering With You, like, you have, like, this... Like, I think... Not just the the main characters are, like, a lot better and more fleshed out, but the surrounding characters, too, just have a lot more personality to them than the, than the side characters in your name, I guess. Like, like w- Weathering With You has, like, a whole community of different characters that, that, that all, like, play an important part of the story and are just engaging and fun to watch. And, yeah, I think, like, Weathering With You just does a lot more with, like, the <clears throat> surreal anime kind of nature with it. It, like, seems like it dwells more into, like, traditional Japanese, like, folklore, I guess. Or, yeah, like, like mythology. And legends and yeah. stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. mythology. That's a good word to describe it. And, yeah, like, it's just... And it's a beautiful-looking film. Like, I honestly think the anime is better. The, mm, the, yeah. Yeah. the food in Weathering With You somehow looks better than, like, real-life food, and I'm just, like, mad. Yeah. The food oh, studio sure. Ghibli films is always yeah. so delicious. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree with you that, like, the characters are surprisingly, like, kind of in, or, there's kind of, like, a, 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 I don't know what the best word to describe, but there's, like, a dark, kind of dark tone to the film, because, like, Mm. they're runaways, and, like, they're, they're not really welcomed anywhere, and, like, they can't really go anywhere because they're underage, because they're, like, so young, you know, and it's, like, this whole, it's, (laughs) you're gonna laugh at me, but the ending of this film reminded me of the ending of The Last of Us. Um, okay. No, I the, see that. Yeah, in the <laughs> sense that, like, you know, the, the, Weathering With You really poses this really interesting dilemma where it's like, if we sacrifice this one cute kawaii girl, then we can, like, stop global stop climate change we can like have the weather restore the cabin yeah i guess so (laughs) it can restore (laughs) everything back but you can argue that hodaka made a selfish choice but you know he still made a choice that i could understand 
you know, because, like, the world is never done right by him, and, like, he, he, you know, was, like, one of the few things that, like, that made his life happy, and, like, now he has to just, like, let that go for the sake of, mm. like, something that he doesn't care. It's, like, it's, it's a really interesting dilemma that I kind of wasn't prepared to re-experience, but I did, and it's, like, wow, it's, like, this is, like, more, like, <laughs> this is more troubling than The Last of Us' ending, and The Last of Us ends with a fucking massacre, <laughs> you know? So, right. yeah. A- anyway, sorry, Jack, what, what are your general thoughts of whether Oh, no, you? I was just, I was gonna say, um, the reason I, I, I slightly did prefer this over your name, and I, th- I was talking to you briefly about this before, Tim, is that, like, this gets pretty mean and sad towards the end, which I wasn't expecting, like, yeah. pretty bleak too, the whole, uh, Pretty the third up, act yeah. really, yeah. The th- the whole third act really just took me by surprise on how sort of uh like mean it treats its characters, especially with like the whole uh on the run like run all night aspect of like yeah. And as you mentioned, with like um they've got to deal with they've got to you know come to the reality of how young they are. Like there's a whole montage of like people shooing them away because they don't have ID and all this stuff and like they don't yeah. And I don't know. It was. I found that that automatically for me made the the character dynamics more interesting in this than your name in my in my opinion anyway. Yeah, I thought some of the character dynamics were genuinely like heartbreaking. Like that oh, near the end, yeah. Near the end of the film when the the police and the the guy that he that he was like working for when they're surrounding him and he's yeah. pointing the gun at them and he was like he's like breaking down crying. He's like, "Why can't you just leave me alone?" It's like I've never gotten to do what I really want to do and like you guys are always in my way. It's like, "Why can't you just let me have this?" Right. And it's like what I c- my food does to a <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It's like I was I was kind of tearing up. I was like, "Wow, like yeah. I was not expecting this." I, I mean, I guess I, I did expect it cuz I seen this movie before, but like in a rewatch, I was kind of not prepared for how emotionally like heartbreaking the film would be because like it i i and i also understand where you're coming from now luca where it's like the romance in this one is more tragic i guess than in the first one even though the first one yeah. involved fucking genocide from a meteor <laughs> like this one it's like that scene where they're in the hotel and they're kind of like enjoying themselves and like you know eating all this like microwavable food and like you know doing karaoke and all this stuff it's like it's them trying to like you know, make this last as long as possible, and yeah, and and Hina like goes through like the selfless decision, you know, because she she's like terrified. She's like, I don't want to be like the fucking god's like sacrifice or whatever. <laughs> and 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 Hodaka is like, then don't like you, you don't have to be a sun girl anymore. Like just as long as we're together, then that's all that matters. And but she still goes through with it anyway because she thinks she's making the right choice. She's like Ellie from The Last of Us, where yeah. she willingly chooses to sacrifice herself right, for right, the right, sake right, of right, better right, humanity. Played The Last of Us. Oh, well, oh, whoops. Sorry. Oh. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't hear that. I didn't hear that. I <laughs> well, there's a Last of Us too, so you know that. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. Let's yeah, just, Ellie let's is alive on. in the second one, so like you know what happens. Yeah. Yeah. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, so. no, he, Jill it's still doesn't know the big know the big coming. thing, so it's fine. It's okay. Like, oh. Yeah. 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 So. yeah. I was um, but unlike the climax of this film, like I thought it was gonna be some like <laughs> some Moonrise Kingdom shit, where it's just like a big giant rainstorm or something but i was i was really not expecting like the the other yeah, really like bleak and brutal like fish yeah. thing the part <laughs> they kind of arrested by the cops and yeah whatnot, that, and that stuff yeah like the yakuza's around. chasing after yeah, the that, dude I was like really yeah. Taken yeah with all that stuff like his brother uh her, sorry her brother coming up to him like like basically saying to him like you fuck this up you go fix it and like this the, is your fault I was like, yeah, yeah like the weight like, of the whole weight of the situation horrible. on this poor yeah. kid's shoulders and like man this is great yeah it's <laughs> this is fucking awesome <laughs> yeah it's like <laughs> i i can imagine for you jack and jules like uh, unlike the first film uh because you mentioned this before like the first film like when it it sh- goes through this apocalyptic like second plot you're like what the fuck like did i miss something like in this right. one it's like it it has a similar like <laughs> yeah. tonal shift but it's like it, but it's not uh, i mean i don't want to say unexpected cuz like i don't think the tonal shift in, uh, was unexpected in your name either but like this one i feel like was a little more appropriate i guess if that's what you want to call it like because 
it, because the first half of the film was like essentially just like a cutesy like you know like romance you know they're 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 bringing sun to the world you know they're like changing the weather so that it can make you know people happy and stuff like that but then like they you know the, once that one old geezer like meant talks about like the lore <laughs> like this lord of the rings lore about like the weather maiden and stuff like that and mm-hmm. then she starts like experiencing like the consequences of her actions like you know her her body is becoming like a fuck like fucking water goop or whatever She's becoming like aquaman yeah it's like aquaman <laughs> <laughs> or like sto- or like story from like fucking lady in the water or whatever you know like <laughs> right. uh it's like oh, she's it's becoming like the liquid the liquid metal from like the T1000. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's like it's it, it's it's setting up so many things and then it properly pays off a lot of things. It's like it it it, it just works. You know, like this is such a well-written film. Like I know like yeah. we've been talking about the animation and how like so photorealistic and orgasmic it looks, but like the writing is just as on point in this one as it is in your name. Maybe even better. I don't know. So Ooh. Wow. You guys don't yeah. agree, or yeah? No, 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 no. I think no, no, I no. definitely think so. Like, okay. Um, I think the the ending of this film is also just like way more powerful. I I really like the crescendo, like of yeah. music and everything. Like, yeah. I don't I, know. I, I, just, I thought it was I thought it was better executed, or it felt more powerful to me. And, yeah, and yeah, I, exactly. I, finally, like, I thought the music in this film was time. even better than your name somehow. Like, yeah, same. Like, the, yeah. That, the music, yeah, the music did. The music was the so one. fucking awesome. Like I listen to the soundtracks for both of these films often, but I listen to the Weathering with You soundtrack more because it's it's just so good. You know, it's awesome. Yeah, I really yeah, like how I'll add these to my playlist. Yeah, I really like <laughs> how the film uses the gun. Um, yeah. Because I don't know if you yeah, guys yeah, know, yeah, yeah. because Ooh, yeah, recurring plot. like Japan's gun laws are like incredibly strict. super strict. Like, yeah. like if like it's to the point where like the 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 yakuza and like Japanese gangs and even Japanese policemen like don't even use guns. Like yeah. it's like the opposite seeing, of America. Yeah. A gun, the guy yeah, that, it's like the, guy the exact that opposite the former of America. Japanese prime minister. He had to build like a homemade shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like like. Y- yeah, there is no... You're not allowed to have... Like, it's life in prison if you have a gun. Wow. Like, in Japan. Mm-hmm. So, like... Yeah, I really like how they use the gun, because, like, it really... Like, like even, like, when he's when he whips out the gun at the first time, like, the 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 Yakuza dude was like, is that a toy? <laughs> because, yeah. like, that's... As a Japanese person, that's what so you would... When it's real. Yeah, exactly. Because as a Japanese person, if you see a gun on the street, you would just expect it to be a toy gun because that's how uncommon guns are which and makes like, you think that hodaka got like the fucking easiest like sentence ever from his trial because it's like yeah i got yeah, that's that's a, like, a, like, i got three years, years pardoned i was like what <laughs> like i think it was like a bit like maybe because he was like a child so there was like a bit of lenience towards it um but yeah that's <laughs> a paddington two shit yeah, <laughs> but yeah. If, he was, if he was an if he was an adult he would have been fucked so. oh yeah yeah <laughs> that was Maybe a great actually 18 <laughs> yeah like the first time when he pulls it out and like th- the way that like it like like when he shoots it for the first time like the animation looks so pristine like it just oh man it yeah. looks so great and the case yeah drops to the floor and yeah. everyone's like yeah. frozen for a second they're like everyone's like Hold holy up. fuck holy shit yeah. someone just fired a gun everyone back up really at like as slow as you can <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and yeah. the way they constructed that scene, like, even if you had no idea about, like, s- Japanese gun laws or whatever, like, the way they constructed that scene and, like, the impact that the gun makes, like, from the sound and, like, how everyone's just kind of standing there and going, like, what the fuck? Like, yeah. it's... Yeah, exactly. There's clearly a lot of weight put into it where it's, like, you can imply that, like, you know, this is an America where... This is an America where people can go bang, bang, woo, 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 you know, like, all this other shit, you know, like, guns are, like, a very serious thing. And yeah, it's it's yeah. really awesome. Is that the Breaking Bad finale? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, this is a. I allow me to indulge in anime degeneracy here for a second, but I think of Natsuna, course. the uh, uh, the 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 guy who owns the company, the CEO's like niece or whatever premium s tier waifu i was like please oh <laughs> i need a body pillow over right now <laughs> oh. and i guess like any body pillows what do you actually own any body pillows i'm not gonna comment on that 
Okay. Again, okay, moving on swiftly. Yeah, yeah let's move on. Yeah. Even I'm uncomfortable with this. Yeah. yeah, I'm sweating. Yeah, I um I I wanted to ask Jules, I what about these characters do you I guess do you not resonate with as much compared to like Taki and Mitsuha from from your name? Yeah, I th- I feel like it was more specifically like the fact that we just don't really get to see, like, specifically the, um... Fuck, what's, his name? what's the voice name again? Odaka? <laughs> I keep forgetting. Yeah. Odaka, yeah. Yeah. That we don't get to see, like, his... We're just kind of, like, told that, like, oh, fuck my parents, that it was suffocating to live on that island. But, like, I don't really get to see, like, his decision to what drove him to, like, run away like that that's fair like, yeah yeah mm-hmm. same with um with uh hina he, hina yeah he, he, heine um heine. Yeah. <laughs> heine. <laughs> yeah yeah it's like I, even even oh, less with her that like i was like did she did she even say like why she why she ran away i thought it was implied like, that she, her mom died right yeah oh yeah yeah, yeah 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 Actually, no, that, that's not implied they say it, don't they? No, they, they yeah. straight up... The, the film opens with an aging woman with cancer on her hospital bed. Like, that's not... It's, an, it's not the most subtle thing in the world, so... Yeah. 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 Oh, I didn't catch that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. No, I, I mean, really who knows? It heads a lot of, over a lot of people. I didn't even know this was about global warming the first time I saw it. That's how... <laughs> that's, that's amazing. You need to have a high IQ to understand whether I'm with you. <laughs> Uh-huh. The jokes go over extremely subtle. Here. Oh, fuck, I fucked that up so badly. Yeah, I love yeah, how... I like, oh, sorry, go I ahead. Feel like the, yeah. The, yeah, I just feel like the... The, the like, the connection to them, for me, just wasn't quite there as I connected with, like... Especially with the dynamic between the two in, in your name. Like... They, cause they kind of seem to get together, to not, not like, obviously the characters in Your Name didn't fall in love at first, but the fact that they came together, like, over, like, let's just make some money together, which, I mean, is in, like, a city where they're, where, like, that's, that's obviously everyone's goal, because it's, like, a, it's, it's a hard city to live in, as he says, like, mm-hmm. so many times, but, um, yeah, they just... Yeah, I don't know. The the relationship dynamics just weren't quite there, and I just didn't quite connect with them as much. You don't think they have as and like as much chemistry as like the the yeah, pair from yeah, your name? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't quite sold on like how they came together and stuff. That's fair. I but, I think that is a but fair I do, point. I do I yeah. do I do really like the um the sequence with the gun though. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think also how did he? He must have been a, like a, a psychopath to add to because he recognized her from like the back by her hair while she was wearing. <laughs> he was an ultra creeper. <laughs> That's the one. Yeah. That's the girl. Yeah, it's like you're oh the one God. who gave me that burger. I the braids. You're the one <laughs> who gave me her. that burger one time. I'm gonna throw yeah. my entire life for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, I I was surprised how interesting the side characters were. Like I know like the side characters yeah, that was in your name. Yeah, the strongest element about it. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. I, but I'm I'm a little more forgiving of that. Of course. Yeah, I'm a little more forgiving of that in your name because the side characters are never like the focus. Like the main focus is always on the main character. So like I was fine with kind of a lack of dimensionality or development for the side characters. But in this one they really take the time to make all the side characters that he interacts with, like, like meaningful, you know, like the main guy, like he has, um, sorry, not the main, the, the, uh, the CEO dude, like he, he's trying to win back his daughter's like custody or whatever. And, you know, she's like, he, he, yeah. he seems like a fucking like drunk gambling <laughs> loser or whatever, but like, he's kind of like a soft, he, he like, he's a romantic at heart because that scene where he kind of slaps him and go like can you stop fucking around and like turn yourself in or whatever but then when he sees like oh it's like for love or whatever it's for love mare for you know to quote interstellar (laughs) like he kind of changes his tune because he's like he's he's a romantic at heart so which is why like he he decides to help him like you know with his religious crusade or whatever so it's 
a lot of the character side characters are just really interesting. Like I, I surprisingly cared about all of them. So. Oh yeah, no, like the 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 younger brother was just like flat out like my favorite character in the entire movie. Oh hell yeah, he so was he's, great. He's referred to he as senpai, awesome. and I lost my shit. He was so. a hustler. He was just in the back of the bus talking to girls. I was like, <laughs> yeah. He was the ladies' man. He was the ladies' yeah. man. Yeah, he was a swap. And then the whole like, oh shit. God damn it! Um, uh, he, the <laughs> that was my alarm clock. Yeah, I that that scene where um he what, his like ex comes to visit him and she's like, I can't believe I'm doing this for my ex. And he's like, Yeah, yeah, whatever. And it's like this dude is <laughs> just like getting 12, all yeah. the girls. <laughs> like, what the hell? Yeah. Yeah. So it's we're amazing. all doing something wrong. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, I. Luke is so... like can't relate. <laughs> 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 nope. Yeah. yeah no. <laughs> yeah. I. Uh, yeah. I. I can't wait to. Um, yeah. I. I. It really sucks that this didn't get as much praise as as your name, because like I think there's so much this film has to offer. Yeah, it's still. It's still. Also. It's still solid. Like despite my criticisms of it like i don't want to shit talk it too much like the animation of course and the side characters and as well They're yeah what, and it, my favorite aspect about it yeah sorry uh, what was your question yeah oh no no i was just gonna say i'm curious what were the what were the uh characters that made the crossover between these two movies oh D- taki and mitsu are in this one Oh, I must have. Yeah, I. What the hell was I doing? Okay, like the, this in is the jewelry shop. I was wondering yeah. if that was going to happen, actually. But that's yeah, actually in I. This is what I meant when when this is my Avengers Endgame, because right. like oh. I finally understand all of the like the man nerds hey. who like scream and lose their <laughs> shit when like their favorite obscure comic book character shows up. Right. When Taki and Mitsuha show up in this film, I l- for the first time, I legitimately lost my shit. I was like <laughs> screaming. I was like no fucking way. <laughs> like um so yeah, Taki w- so in the scene where they like visit the grandma and like the guy just like walks out is like grandma you got people over like that was Taki oh, and then was that him? I yeah that, I, 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 I that like was that him. Taki. Because yeah, that was. Oh. I'm that was him because I watched. Um, yeah, because that looked like him, and I was like, F- "Is that talking?" Yeah, yeah, that that is him, and and that was a oh, very. Oh yeah. And Mitsuha was in the jewelry store when he's like buying the ring for Hina, and uh, Mitsuha's like. Okay. It was oh, like Mitsu was like, dude, the, yeah, like you, you, we, we looked for the perfect rig for three hours. Like she's gonna love this shit, you know. So, gotcha. and and it's implied that those scenes that happen in Weathering with you, they happen before Taki and Mitsuha meet again, like at the right. end of your name. Because what I love about Shinkai is that all of his films take place in the same universe. So, like according to the timeline. That's during those Tokyo moments. Tokyo flooded, and there was also. <laughs> it's okay. It, it's it, a, that means there's a timeline inconsistency then. No, 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 no. Because it's implied that, from what I understand, the day that Hina decides to sacrifice herself, that was the day that Taki and Mitsuha met again for the first time in God knows how long. Oh, so like. Right. The sacrifice of one romance for the for the rebirth of another one. <laughs> oh, it's all connected. Yeah, yeah. and I gotta watch his other films now. And, they're all connected. It's like a chain. <laughs> it's just been and I don't. One it's of it's us, super. The previous. Oh films wait, no, are, it is sunny on the day when she yeah. sacrifices herself. So I guess, and you yeah, notice there were mind. puddles on the floor at the end of your name. Oh, oh God, we're doing super shit. deep cuts. Now. <laughs> yeah, there were puddles <laughs> on the floor. Holy yeah. shit. It's like some English teacher <laughs> shit. And 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 I don't know if you know this but like uh, some of the other characters they were these were like super quick like they're they're basically blink or you miss some moments like Mitsu was like friends uh Tessie and whatever the fuck her his girlfriend's name was like they were in this film as well. They were the people who were in the elevator when uh Hina does the sunshine business for the first time. They were like, "Oh my god, so pretty" or whatever. Like, do you guys remember those characters? No. <laughs> okay. Well, Mitsuha's <laughs> sister also appears in the film. She she's near the end of the film, but yeah, I. W- God damn! Does everyone just appear? In this <laughs> I guess so. I was losing my shit. Like I said, like this is my Avengers End Game. I totally get it now. So yeah. Right. Yeah. So. But yeah. Uh, we should probably wrap this up one up soon since we're cutting close to time. Um, yeah. Unless there's like anything else you guys are like dying to say. 
because I don't want to be just the only person <laughs> being a degenerate weeb and talking about anime for like <laughs> two hours straight. So, <laughs> no, we can wrap it up. I don't really cool. have anything else to say. Cool. Yeah. So yeah, um, I guess we can get into ratings. Unless Jack, Jules, you have anything else you want to say or? No, sorry, I was um, just distracted by the Rick Dalton gift. I appreciated that. Yeah. <laughs> that's me. It's like, oh my god, that's the... That's, that's, yeah, yeah. that's, that's random. But you're like cheering and like jumping up and down and yeah, clapping yeah, yeah. hands. Holy it, shit, that's random citizen 675 yeah. from your Holy name. Holy shit, he came back. <laughs> oh my god, it's the English teacher from Oh my from god, I'm so name. glad we saw random citizen 327 again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But he truly loves his fans. Yeah. <laughs> And he says he hates his fans. Yeah, yeah, I don't believe yeah. a word of it. And yeah. I, honest to God, I will be pissed if Hina and Hodaka don't show up in Satoshi Kon's next film, Suzume. Like, I am going to do... Satoshi Kon. You said Satoshi Sorry, Kon. I meant M- Makoto Shinkai, not <laughs> Satoshi. Oh, Satoshi Kon's dead. Oh, no. <laughs> I will lose my shit. Oh. I will be so upset. It's like, why the fuck are yeah, Taki and... Yeah, I would lose and- my shit if Satoshi Kon made a new film. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, anyway, uh, I'm giving this one uh, an 8 out of 10. Um, I don't know if this is better or worse than your... I, I honestly don't know anymore, because I thought for <laughs> sure Your Name was the better film, but honestly, I, I see I see your POV, Luca. I, I don't know. I, I don't want to know... I don't want to say this is better or worse. I, I They're kind of like on equal footings for me. I have no idea which one I like more, but that's uh, an issue I'll figure out later. I'll so. say it's better, and I'll give it a 7 out of 10. <laughs> Not nice. perfect, yeah. but... Um pretty fun and great little animated film yeah you guys have given me some of a a a different perspective and appreciation for it but i um i still didn't connect with it as much as your name uh it's a seven out of ten i think david fincher would uh love this movie because there's lots (laughs) of dark miserable rain Oh, okay. I was like, why David Fincher in particular? Yeah, I was, okay. yeah, I was wondering about that too. I was like, where's he going with this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the, the the whole the whole movie is just the characters trying to escape being in a David Fincher movie. Yeah, I was gonna yeah, yeah. say like James Cameron must have like splooged the, when if he ever saw this because it's like so full of water. You know, like there's water everywhere. Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. So. Darren Aronofsky w- ripped it off for uh, Noah. <laughs> yeah, fucking hack. <laughs> first, first Satoshi Kone, and now Makoto Shinkai. <laughs> Why don't you stop stealing from anime for once but in your life? Me- but due to a meteor flying over Earth, um, he- there was it was in 2014. Oh yeah, Roland Emmerich's now stealing from anime too. So <laughs> yeah, that's a guy who's never made a good movie in his life. That's for sure. So definitely not. I don't yeah. know, 10,000 BC and Independence Day research. Oh, pretty, yeah, those masterpieces. Yeah, what about so. Godzilla? <laughs> mm-hmm. Jack? Oh, yeah, I always forget oh. he made that. <laughs> uh, for me... Uh, hey, wait, yeah, could I'm you gonna... ready? <laughs> I'm going to give it another seven. I think it's just as equally as, um, as cute and as sweet and nice and as warm as uh, your name, but I, although I do think the... Um, uh, the character dynamics and the third actor uh, hit hit closer to home for me. So yeah, yeah. Um, perf- perfectly, <clears throat> perfectly good movie. Solid seven. Perfectly blue, good movie. Sorry, that one was a stretch. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah. All right, uh, question time. Yeah, let's get into quick questions. Like, let's do one or two. I don't know however long we take okay, cool. to answer one of them. Um, so this one comes from Michael. Uh, if you were going to bring someone Big over Mike. to watch a movie, uh, what would you? What would you guys? What would your guys' pick for someone who doesn't watch art house movies? So like, if if your best buddy oh. came over to watch a film, oh. what would you watch? So so I guess oh. in in case of Luca, that's just what okay. movie will you show for Jasper? <laughs> so yeah. No, I feel like well, this Wes has Anderson to be a a, a a someone else because Jasper's into like more art house stuff now. Okay. So. Yeah. But he hated. If I had to stuff. show someone that doesn't like art house. Uh, <coughs> bless you. Bless um, you. <coughs> I don't bless know. I, I feel like. The I feel Lighthouse. like. 
Yeah, obviously. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like for me, if I wanted to get my friend who isn't into art house movies into art house films, it, it would have to like kind of be like a compromise between like you know, there's still like a lot of mainstream like digestible things in it while also like having some weird shit. But at the same time though, like I mean like I probably would never show my friend like Eternal Sunshine, even though that's like the perfect like balance between like mainstream and like art house, I guess. I don't know. I guess like I'm thinking more like I don't know, like an action blockbuster with a lot of like directorial flair to it, like the Matrix or something like that. Yeah, like the Matrix Matrix or something. Yeah. Yeah. So or like I don't know, John Wick or something like that, or the raid. I don't know. So the yeah. raid seems like a more obvious choice because everyone's seen John Wick. Yeah, so or like Jackie well, Chan films. I, like um, I would love to show. I've I've showed my friends, um, uh, Police Story one through three, and they they loved all of them. Like they really yeah. enjoyed them. Yeah, great so. movies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So sorry, well, just I, what you're um, saying. When I invite my friends, the same one who who likes um, Halloween 2018 more than the original. Oh God! Um, <laughs> I was um, I went to his house once, and we stayed up night watching movies. And he's like, "Okay, Jules, give me, give me, give me the best ones." And we ended up watching a double feature of um, District Nine, and uh, purposely picked Children of Men. <laughs> oh my God! And then I. At, at in the morning, in the early morning, I pray, made probably the most evil decision I've ever done, which is I'm, I chose Uncut Champs to watch at six o'clock in the morning. This poor guy, he got destroyed. He's now in a hospital. Feel- I feel like I don't want to be yeah. friends with you, Jules, if you're going to make me stressed out at 6 a.m. in the morning. Yeah. So. <laughs> that is cruel. This is probably the most fucked up thing I've ever done. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, but probably, like, something something like District 9 that's, like, it's a bit out there, but, like, it's something right. that, like, everyone can enjoy. Yeah. But not too, like, miserable, like, Children of Men. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Jack or Luca? Yeah, I said mine already. Oh, the oh, wait. What did you say? Oh, the li- wait. Really? The Independence. Day I, I think the best approach is <laughs> you show them something. Okay, it's got to be a horror movie, and it's got to be a fucked up, weird horror movie. Yeah. Because that's when you that that's how you ju- then you judge the vibes from there. Because if they're into it, you're like cool. If they're not into it, you're like oof. But like. That's what I did with Jasper, honestly. I was like, okay. We're uh, this okay. <laughs> this the I mean, test. might as well just go all the way. Like, just, <laughs> just, test. just like, do you like the lighthouse? Yeah, just like throw yeah. on climax or something and just be like, okay, let's see what happens from here, you know? So, <laughs> yeah, because oh, I feel I like do people. That with my friend. Oh, I'm going to do that next time. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like, like, people don't really like jumping into, like, art house dramas, I guess. But I feel like, like, uh, the typical audience member does get a bit more interested when it's like a surreal horror movie. Like, I feel like people are actually yeah. really into that stuff, like Midsommar, Hereditary, like, yeah. I feel like most people actually well, are kind of into that stuff, so... There's, right. there's often yeah. a line that's kind of drawn or blurred between, like, art house and horror, because they all yeah. are kind of, like, surrealist in a way. So, yeah, like, so, most yeah. people can get into them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, the li- the lighthouse is like my my judging test. Like if you like the lighthouse, like cool. That's the litmus test. Now now we can build <laughs> upon that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Jack, what did you say? Uh, no, that was a joke answer before. But I'm actually funny enough. I'm going to say uncut gems. Um, for some oh, reason, nice. like, <laughs> not not only is it like just flat out one of my favorite movies, but I don't yeah. I don't get that stressed watch. I don't I don't know what this says about me as a person, but I don't get that stressed watching it. I like. God. I just think. I'm, it's just because people get stressed by loud talking and talking over. <laughs> no, people. I just, I just think that like the way the that... Safties shoot their films is just really stressful. Yeah. Like, as I was also, it's so claustrophobic. I was also right. stressed out when I watched Good Time. I was like, these guys God. really don't want me to have a good, good time. time. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. No. Yeah. Well, yeah. I I showed a friend uh, uh, who's not into movies at all. I showed her recently Uncut Gems, and I was like, just sit down and watch this, and just like just prepare yourself because like you know Adam Sandler's doing something like the Safties are gods obviously and like 
And she enjoyed it, but I, I think that's probably my, my go-to because it's like, I think it's an easy get, uh, like a gateway drug into the sort of like, uh, obviously like the, the movies, the Safties love doing like riffing on like, obviously there's like Thief in there, like Michael Mann's Thief and whatnot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yeah. so I think that's like probably, that's probably my gateway into, into showing, doing like sort of the, the art house sort of thing. Oh shit. I, I just came up with the perfect, like gateway kind of movies the cornetto trilogy i think the cornetto trilogy oh, is a perfect, perfect oh yeah yeah gateway into that yeah like yeah, i've i've showed I all really my friends I, saw Art House, though. Like... I, I mean kind of i i've showed my friends the entire cornetto trilogy and they loved it like there's not a single thing they didn't they didn't like about it so right. i mean i guess like art house in terms of not generic cookie cutter bullshit that's like i'm i'm defining art house in the loosest way possible so mm-hmm. yeah. i showed a, um, right. i showed a few of my friends um monty python and the holy grail and they really loved it yeah that's a good movie yeah i yeah. consider that art house as well so yeah <laughs> cool. uh yeah. do you want to do one more question, question or do we want to just call it quits for today oh no <laughs> luca when we does can... your power go out it goes off in 15 minutes so we can do one more but we gotta like squeeze okay, it okay quick yeah. okay let's do it let's let's <laughs> let's set like an eight to ten minute time limit on this one and then luca can yeah. say okay, her thing and then we can go home yeah so okay so both of these questions are kind of the same so i'm just mash them together so what's a movie that everyone loves that you hate or like what's a classic film that Ooh, you just gotta, don't get the hype for, for i have a ton of these and jack knows ex- yeah. exactly what they are <laughs> so because jack kind of so knows wait, wait, me pretty well first. at this point yeah <laughs> who, who asked yeah the my question? one is oh yeah sorry uh that was that was from both cole and and pawn so yeah, they, okay. they basically asked the same question yeah so okay Mm-hmm. My one is the the original Top Gun, which Ooh. I I also seen agree. It's a until... piece of shit. I don't like Whoa. it. Yeah, yeah, fuck that movie. I yeah, hell yeah. So much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh God, boys, you're gonna make me cry. I'm sorry. It's just a. It's look. If it was, I don't like the American patriotism. <laughs> look, if it if it fully committed to being a gay porno. Then I it was a it would be a masterpiece ten out of ten like yeah if it was just gay porn then I yeah, then pretty I, much yeah. it is it's not far off I would be more comfortable watching no, it as no, gay porn no. than like as it what it actually is which is like it's trying to be like an action movie but also like trying to be this like pro military patriot like propaganda piece and I'm like what the fuck is this shit you know and I'm from right. America and I didn't even yeah. get it so you're acting like <laughs> RRR isn't the same thing though RRR is like Indian but Indian RRR propaganda. has the decency to like but at Indi- least be entertaining you know right. like it at least yeah. has the but decency RRR to be does fun it right that's that's what Top Gun should have been but also actually, fuck okay. Britain I don't give a shit about Britain they're just <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so I wonder why the BAFTAs didn't nominate it for best foreign film <laughs> yeah I wonder why so <laughs> uh, um I'm gonna say Forrest Gump. Yeah, I'm oh, not. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. I'm not a big Zemeckis guy, but I don't know. Forrest Gump seems to be. I've revisited a couple times over the years, and I don't think I'm going to be anytime soon because each time I get increasingly annoyed. I mean, it's definitely not better than Pulp Fiction or Shawshank Redemption. That's for sure. No, but... definitely not. Yeah, but I, yeah, I don't. I feel like it's like one of those movies that like hasn't. The people are like kind of turned on over time that like it hasn't aged well. It. I'll just oh, say yeah, that. Absolutely yeah, not. but yeah, I still I to, I'll rewatch it when I have the time. I, <laughs> I still get enjoyment out of it. It's like, is it Zemeckis's best? Absolutely not. But it's no, I, I, there's some features. enjoyment. Like I still think I Tom. Should I, I I think it's Back to the Future, but that's a topic for another time. So, um, yeah, Luca, what about you? <laughs> I have so many that, like, everyone loves <laughs> that I don't like. Mm. Um, I mentioned it earlier, but the original Halloween, like, it's so fucking boring. That's such a hot like, take. I love that it. That is a very hot take. That's harder it, than I anything know it's I a said. Hot take, <laughs> but, so. like, like, it's, yeah. I'm also, like, not a big, not the biggest fan of the original Indiana Jones or, like, the original Holy Terminator. Shit. That films. is bullshit. I, we're, that is, yeah, when we like, talk yeah. about, when we talk about Indiana Jones at some point, either me or Jules is going to recommend it, we're going to make gonna you like me. those movies. <laughs> 
yeah Luke like is gonna, probably gonna like terminator 2 doom, like though. didn't didn't stick with me what? like what yeah no. <laughs> that was such a good reaction Luca just hates action films I <laughs> yeah think. maybe i just hate action yeah because also like one of the newer examples is like dune like the more i think on, holy shit like, what am i dune, listening to yeah the, the more i think of dune dune I, it just it just lowers in my mind i'm just like no this is just like Jules. What is J- Jules is so mad that he, he's deciding to share his screen. <laughs> so. He's going to share his frustration. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, there's just like a, there's a ton of classics that like people ha- ha- hold in high regard that I just don't end up loving as much as a lot of people. And I don't know why. Maybe it's just, a, maybe I'm just, there's something wrong with me. But yeah. <laughs> Like, there was something wrong with you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah maybe there is. Fix uh, that Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yeah, Raiders, Raiders of the Lost Ark is a perfect action film. Come on, so. Um, it is the blueprint. Yeah, it's the blueprint for everything. Say, it is the no, blueprint. it no, it's not cringe to say if it's fucking factual. So, yeah. No, but that's a, that's the a thing that people say that Zack Snyder fans say. They say Zack Snyder is the blueprint. Well, okay, if Zack Snyder comes back with an actual good movie, then he can talk about whether or not it's a fucking blueprint to anything. Oh, yeah, I'm sure we'll talk about Rebel Moon for the podcast. God fucking Christ, yeah. Um, <laughs> get, get me back for that one. Anyway. Yeah, <laughs> we will, don't worry. Yeah, uh, anyway, I mean, I feel, like, I feel like I've said enough shit to Jack yeah. and all in, in, his, in the community to know what some of the hot takes I have. Um... But I guess, like, in terms of, like, classics, I guess, that's the more appropriate answer. I don't think I've seen a good old musical that I actually like. Um, mm. Like, I remember... I seen any. <laughs> I remember before I saw Spielberg's West Side Story, I rewatched the original, and I was so fucking bored. I <laughs> couldn't... I, I barely finished the movie. I could... I, I barely made it out of it, and I watched uh, Sound of Music afterwards, because I know my mom loves that movie, and I couldn't even finish that one. That one was unbearably insufferable. I hated those movies. Have you seen... Um, have you seen Martin Scorsese's musical, New York, New York? I haven't, but I want to see it at some point, so... <laughs> he followed... He followed, arguably, his best film with his worst film. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the saddest shit on Earth. <laughs> Yeah, it's like when I followed up Perfect Blue with Southland Tales. I was like, <laughs> that was a masterpiece. So, yeah, I mean, like, I've, I've said before things that I just don't get the, I understand the hype for. Like, I think Speed Racer is a massive piece of shit, and I don't understand how anyone could defend that film. Uh, I don't think many people do. I, you'd be surprised, I'm just saying. So uh, I think yeah, there's, too. like, a few yeah, that's people true, that really know. love it, but, like, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I guess the Matrix Resurrection is another one. I don't get why yeah, anyone likes one. that one. Yeah, I don't get why anyone likes that one at all. That film. It's yeah. so terrible. Yeah. So, and I could go on, but I'll I'll just rant <laughs> yeah, for another. We need, we need, to, we need to wrap this shit up. So we need uh, to wrap before Lucas Power goes out. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, any other mentions, Let's... or uh, we good? No. So. I think we covered it all. I think we're good. Yeah. Yeah, I guess All so. All right. All right. All right, Luca. Uh, so yeah. So I should probably mention. Uh, normally, it would be Jules's turn first, but uh, Jules wants to switch because there's a don't new... spoil it. Yeah. No, I'm not gonna spoil it. There's a release coming out that Jules wants to recommend. So we're waiting until that finally comes out. So for now, Luca and Jules are it's switching a places. Yeah. So. Yeah, we're, yeah. We're, so we're for, so until that happens, we're switching places. So Luca's gonna go first, then Jules, and then when it gets back to me, we're gonna go back to the original order. Wow. So yeah, yeah. 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 So right. so because Timmy recommended a romance thing, and I know Jules is gonna recommend a romance thing. I thought might as well also throw throw in uh, some romance in there. Um, and I've been bouncing back on what I want to recommend, but actually I decided today. That you know, screw the other things that I want to recommend. I think I know. I want to recommend heading. "You Too, Mama Tambien." Oh, okay, not the direction oh, I was expecting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I thought you were gonna I say. I just so, got the DVD for that. I, Hell yeah! This has so, been on my yeah. watch list for. I I thought you were gonna say "Eternal Sunshine." That's I was like, I, no, I, that's no, why I said no, this. No, I think no. I know where this is heading. So, yeah. No, "You Too, Mama Tambien" from Alfonso Caron. 
Cool. Yeah, uh, no, this has been on yeah. my watch list for fucking forever. I've been meaning yes, to see this I for a long time. A to watch yeah, it. I finally have an excuse to <laughs> see it now. Yeah, this is amazing. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, if you don't want to be spoiled for Itu Mama Tambien, uh, 2001, I think, 2002, some, somewhere around, around that, that year. Yeah. Somewhere around that. Directed by Alfonso Cuaron, the guy who made Harry Potter and nothing else. Uh, watch <laughs> whoa, it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> nah, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> watch it. The guy who made this and J.K. Rowling said that this is the man we need. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> uh, watch it because we're going to spoil it I'm next episode. That's true. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you, Jack, for uh, coming on. You're, um, hey, thanks for having me. You were an amazing, amazing yeah, guest. Amazing no, guest. Yeah, absolute pleasure. I'm keen we to We must do this vibe again. and get a bunny yeah. sausage sometimes. Hey, yeah, Jules, you... that's going to happen. Lock it in, brother. Do you have anything you want to yeah, plug uh, I'm, aside I'm from the. I'm just you right now. Yeah, do you have anything <laughs> you want to plug aside from the podcast? or? Uh... Um, no, so yeah, Middle Section is the, the weekly podcast me and my co host John do on Spotify. Um, I'm a frequent and staff writer over on a website called The Buff Film Buffs where you can hear my jargon and absolute nonsense dribble of new release movies. So check that out if you want to hear me talk about new release stuff. But yeah, no, please go listen to the podcast. That would mean the world to me. But um, no, thank you for having me. Do you me, have a letterbox? Guys. Oh, letterbox, yeah. Um, I think yeah, you can just it. drop it in the uh, the the group chat. Yeah, so there we go, there mm-hmm. we go. I think it's just Jack yeah. Siddle or something. But yeah, yeah, I'll I'll drop that in the group chat. But yeah, no, absolute pleasure. Thank you so much yeah. for having me. We'd love to. Yes. We we're happy to have you. Yeah, we we definitely need you to come back at some point. And yeah, we also need again. we also need John to come on Hell at yeah. some point. So I know and... John would be very keen. <laughs> I'm I'm glad we can finally get a fucking American on this show and not a fucking disgusting European. What uh, actually that doesn't even oh make sense God. since none of you are from Europe, so that joke yeah. doesn't even make sense. Yeah. <laughs> a dirty Australian. Yeah. D- so. Dirty. <laughs> Bunnings fiend. Yeah. D- yeah. <laughs> anyway. Uh, a dirty white white bread. Yeah. Anyway, thank you everyone. Uh, goodbye. Bye. Have fun. Bye. 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 Bye.